Thank you, councillors. Welcome to the public and those watching via webcast. While this is a public meeting, it's a meeting for the purpose of council decision making and I ask those members of the public present to not interject in the process. I remind those that are in the chamber that your image and what you say will be broadcast live to the public and is also recorded. So please be mindful of what you do in your comments. You should avoid making statements that might defame or offend and note the council will not be responsible for your actions. If I could ask you to switch off mobile phones or put them on silent as they tend to interfere with the sound system and can make it hard to hear what's going on. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which we're meeting today and pay my respects to elders past and present. Any apologies, councillors? No apologies. Uh, councillors, I just note um, for, the, for the public that there are two items um, on the agenda that weren't on the table of contents that appeared on the website. Um, so item 7.2, the notice of motion on homelessness and item 8.1, the rescission motion regarding the Adelaide mast. Um, that information was up on the website but it just wasn't in the table of contents that was on the website. Uh, I'd also just like to take a moment to acknowledge um, that locally we had 18 Central Coast community members who were recipients of Queen's um, birthday honours um, and congratulate those people on behalf of Council. Also just note um, a nice increase in the number of women that received honours this year. So um, congratulations to all of those people and on behalf of Council I'll be sending a letter to each of those um, recognising their award. Councillors, moving on to disclosures of interest. Do any councillors or staff have any conflicts of interest to disclose in the matters under consideration um, for council tonight? Um, do I have anybody? Councillor Matthews. I'm just actually um, finding out um, 4.7 and 4.8, which are the um, community support grant programs and community partnership building. I'm just trying to work out exa exactly which ones that I made some insignificant um, declarations on and one was, um, but they were both insignificant and I'm remaining in the chamber, but I'll, I'll just actually locate those and fill out the form. But they're insignificant and staying in the chamber. Thank you, Councillor Thank you. Matthews. Um, Councillor McLaughlin. Um, same, same items. Uh, I'm actually a sponsor of the Long Jetty Street Festival, so on that matter, I won't be voting and I'll remove myself from, from the uh, chamber. Uh, thank you, Councillor McLaughlin. Let me just clarify, that's item 4.8, I think. The Yes, through you, Madam Mayor. Yes, 4.8 and Councillor Matthews, a minute's note that you declared a less than significant non-pecuniary interest in the Kids Day Out application and Charm Haven Tennis um, Centre. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Councillor McLaughlin. Councillor Hogan. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Item 4.7, community support grants. I declare a significant non-pecuniary and because I have a professional working relationship with the grant recipients. Thank you, thank you. Councillor Hogan. Councillor Gail Collins. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, less than significant non-pecuniary for 7.2 homeless concerns and 8.1 uh, the rescission motion. I will be staying in council chamber. Thank you, Councillor Gail Collins. Councillor Pillen. Uh, mine's a non-pecuniary insignificant interest with the grants as well with musicians making a difference. Yeah, thank you. And I'll be staying in the chamber. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Pillen. Councillor Burke. Through you, Madam Mayor. Um, item 4.4, a non-pecuniary less than significant. Uh, um, uh, I was the chair of the foundation of the trust for eight years. Thank you, Councillor Burke. Uh, Councillor Holstein. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Item of the Community Support Grants yet again. I no longer work for the organisation, but did when the uh, grants were put in. So it's a non-pecuniary interest and uh, I will remain in the chamber as it wasn't recommended for approval anyway and I no longer deal with that organisation. Thank you, Councillor Holstein. Um, and councillors, I'll declare um, similarly on item 4.8, the grants program, um, as former voluntary CEO of Community Environment Network, who have um, put in two applications which aren't recommended for approval, so non-significant, non-pecuniary, um, and I'll stay in the chamber. 
And I'll also declare on item 8.1, the rescission motion regarding the Adelaide Mars. So significant but non-pecuniary because of my involvement with the Central Coast Marine Discovery Centre and a number of diving groups that um, may have an interest in that matter. So I will leave the chamber for that item. Uh, Councillor Best, did you have a declaration? Not as such, but I have a question to the General Manager on the declarations. Uh, what's your question, Councillor Best? Mr General Manager, um, I note um, there are a number of declarations on 8.1 and we have 7.2 and 1.2 and I note that the Code of Meeting Practice D9 requires all notices of motions and rescissions in that regard should be tabled into the index five, six working days before. How is it that these three items are now on the agenda when they were not in the original agenda to the Council? Um, through you, um, Madam Mayor, um, Councillor Best, there was a need to publish an amended report to include the second part of the um, minutes from the adjourned meeting and adjourned, therefore, a, an amended paper was being published. The statutory period for um, giving notice of the business is three days under Section 367 of the Local Government Act. And I made the decision that um, it was appropriate to publish that rescission motion um, in circumstances where if I hadn't have done so, it would have been an urgency motion anyway. And I thought that it was a convenient way to save some time in the chamber that's much needed. Thank you, Mr. Van Denny. So on the supplementary to that question, you say statutorily three days. That's a regulation you're referring to, I imagine. So the regulation's three days and the council's code of meeting practice um, is seven working days from 5 p.m. Um, of the original day of count. Is that correct? Um, through you, uh, Madam Mayor, Councillor Best, and I'm going from memory, the Code of Meeting Practice aspires to publishing the business paper on the Friday. It's page 12, if anyone's looking it up for the General Manager. D9. Thank you. The, just allow me to, page 12, you say, Councillor yes. Best? Bottom of second, last bottom. They're referring to motions, but rescissions are motions. I'm referring to the 12th of February edition, most recent. Yes. Councillor Best, while um, Mr Glendening is just looking at that, I just have one more declaration, I think, if I could take that. Councillor Greenaway, did you have a declaration? You want Thank to you, Madam Mayor. Just um, item 4.8, um, less than significant non-pecuniary interest in that I was previously a board member of um, the Community Environment Network before resigning in October last year. Thank you, Councillor Greenaway. Uh, Mr Glendening? Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Ms Sullivan's kindly given me the correct reference. Um, thank you for that. Um, clause 9 of the Code of Media Practice on page 12, as you say, Councillor Bess, says that the agenda paper will be distributed at 5 p.m. six working days before the meeting. That's the aspiration. The statutory minimum is three days in the Act. Um, there is always the ability to publish an amended paper before that statutory time frame, and it's my view both my current role and my normal role, that what was done was lawful and appropriate. I'm not Thank suggesting it wasn't lawful. Right. I'm just curious as to how and why we chose to do that um, with such notice to the public and the council, that was um, all. It was in circumstances where the further minutes needed to be published and in circumstances where I was aware that um, it was within the statutory time frame, and I was aware that it, had I not taken that view that the mover would have um, put forward it as, as an urgency motion. And I was trying to save some debate time in the chamber. Thank you, Brian. Appreciate your answer. Thank you. Um, councillors, so we've had a number of declarations. So um, I'll move that council receive the report on disclosures of interest and note the advice of disclosures. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Gail Collins, all in favour? Any opposed? Thank you, councillors. Um, councillors, I note that we have a number of a uh, number of people listed to speak at the meeting tonight. So, Mr. Lloyd Taylor on item 4.1, uh, 
Deferred notice of motion, Council Sister City Japan trip. Speaking for the recommendation, Mr. Bill Jackson, item 4.2. Uh, deferred matter, Council's public apology for the recommendation. Ms. Sue Dengate, item 8.1, against the recommendation. The rescission motion on the installation of the HMAS Adelaide Mast. And uh, Ms. Polly Norton on item 8.1 for the recommendation on the rescission motion installation of HMAS Adelaide Mass. Um, so could I have a motion to allow, sorry, I've just been advised that Mr. Taylor is not present. Is that correct? Is Mr. Taylor in the room? All right, so we'll delete Mr. Taylor, delete Mr. Taylor from the list. So we have three speakers. Can I have a motion that we allow those speakers to address council? Move Councillor Gail Collins, second and Councillor Pillen. All in favour? Any opposed? Carry. Um, given the interest in those items, um, I would move that Council suspend standing orders and consider items 4.2 and 8.1 after the speakers have been heard. Um, so I move that way. Do I have a seconder? Uh, Councillor Sundstrom, all in favour? Any opposed? Carried. Councillors, I'd invite Mr Bill Jackson to come to the podium. <clears throat> Excuse me, Mr. Jackson. Thank you, sir. I remind you that the meeting's being live streamed and webcast, and you have three minutes. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Madam Mayor, councillors, my name is Bill Jackson. I'm from Buff Point, New South Wales, the northern end. Council of Vincent's area. I had a vested interest in attending the Central Coast Council meeting held on the 14th of May last at Gosford Council Chambers as I had organised the concerned citizens regarding the lack of positive action being taken in regards to dredging of that along channel so that fantasy ferries could resume their passenger ferry service from Palm Beach to Wagstaff and Etalong. As most of you are aware now, this service has been indefinitely cancelled from the 2nd of May 2018 due to the ferry's inability to navigate the entry to Brisbane water via Etalong Channel. Madam Mayor, councillors, I have several concerns regarding the Central Coast Council meeting held on that day. Most, some of these concerns are as follows. The Etalong Channel issue started at approximately 8.30 p.m. when with 150 fellow people, residents interested in this matter, we made stand here for approximately two hours and 20 minutes waiting for it to happen. With the motion by Rebecca Gale Collins on the screen being picked over by the mayor and as a result being that people felt very uncomfortable for Rebecca Gale Collins, as the mayor did this in a very condescending and disrespectful manner. That was followed quickly and closely by the arrogance in the way of another councillor shouted down to the resident. That was unacceptable. It was quite clear this councillor was inciting people to react as he obviously needed an amendment and that the mayor would call a time out. And what a big surprise when the break came conveniently when the public gallery was called to order. Councillors obviously had no idea as to the people's needs and wants when it voted to do nothing about Etalong and Boxhead Channel at several previous council meetings, dating back to the 22nd of February, I think. Seeing the large numbers of people turning up at this Central Coast Council meeting should have encouraged you both collectively and individually not to play politics, but to help fix what the people of the peninsula and surrounds felt is an important issue. Unfortunately and disappointingly, you continue to play politics with our welfare. What a disgrace. Leaving the safety issue for another few months will not help. But thank goodness that we have some common sense prevail and we do have the dredging done. As I left that meeting that night at 10.30 p.m., 
two hours after it had started, with regards to debt along dredging, the overall feeling amongst my co-residents was that uh, of Mr. anger. Mr Jackson, did you need a further minute? Did you need a further minute? Please. Uh, just let me see if there's a motion. Move, Councillor McGregor. Second to Councillor Sundstrom. Yes. As I left the meeting at 10.30pm, the overall feeling was of anger. People in the lift and out on the forecourt, these people felt that this had been all about politics and that the political games that were displayed to benefit the councillors and the party they represent was ineffective. Madam Mayor, councillors, any successful organisation always looks to gain the respect and requirements not only of their customers but of each other. We, the residents, all 338,000 of us, are your clients and you are there to look after us. Sorry, you are here to look after us. Please take the time to reflect on our needs and those of the beautiful Central Coast, not your personal needs or those of the political party that you may represent. Madam Mayor, you must set the tone and culture of our Central Coast Council. Mayors, like chairs of boards, Became, become famous by doing just that and setting the tone and including all councillors in the decision-making process. Um, Mr Jackson, your time is up. If you could start to wrap up, please. Yep. If you could. Yep. You will probably go down in history as the first of many Central Coast mayors, Madam Mayor. With that, you have an opportunity to go down as the best and most proactive mayor even on the Central Coast, ever on the Central Coast. Please don't waste that opportunity. Step one is to apologise humbly, if you like, to the residents at that meeting. Nothing more, but nothing less either. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Madam Jackson. Mayor. Any questions for the speaker? Uh, Councillor McGregor. Thank you for coming to address us today, Mr Jackson. Um, we've heard a lot about what we should be doing. Were you aware of the people here, or were you affiliated with the people here in the gallery who made threats of physical violence to the councillors no, and their families? Wasn't. Do you or your, any organisation that you represent condone that? No, we don't. Would you encourage those people to apologise, in fact, to us rather than the other way around? I would have, had I been, had they have been known to me, I would have made sure that they had apologised, not would have, had. Okay, thank you for that. Thank you, Councillor McGregor. Um, Councillor Greenaway. Oh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm not from your ward, um, from not from the Madam, long area Madam ward. Councillor. And I'm also not from a political party. Madam so Councillor. Mr Jackson, Madam, let's wait for the question, please. Madam Councillor. I'm just, if question. you can wait for the question, I'm asking you a question. Um, I'm just stating what my position is because I did get a couple of emails from you um, assuming that I had a predetermined position on some of this when it, I've been in Wyong Shire for many years and wasn't really up to the Etalong Channel situation. But you may recall at that meeting I did ask the... Um, acting CEO, the last two times that the channel was dredged last year, did the state government require anything from this council to undergo that dredging? And his answer, as you might recall, Mr Glendenning, was no, they didn't require anything. Councillor so Greenway, I, I was asking you why you persisted in pursuing the council rather than going to the state government on this issue. Madam Mayor, through you, Madam Councillor, I, know, I acknowledge the fact that you were elected to a ward, but I also acknowledge the fact that each and every one of you councillors are representing the Central Coast, 338,000 of us residents, not your ward. No, I'm not sorry. You're, not, you're not representing your ward, Madam Councillor. You are representing, you are representing, Madam, you are representing the peninsula, the Central Coast Council and the Central Coast area. Madam Mayor, I didn't make the point. Uh, Councillor Greenaway, I just need a question. Ma Madam, so Madam Mayor, As familiar you? with this issue, because I'm not from Gosford, the former Gosford. That was the sole purpose of that point. I no, put said, no point said I wasn't representing the whole uh, Central Coast. Councillor Greenaway, um, okay. Uh, Mr Jackson, we might move on. Um, Through you, Madam Mayor. So, so what Through was you, Madam Mayor. Question? The, the, say that the last two times the count that the 
dre the channel was dredged, that there was no requirement from the Central Coast Council to do anything, the state government was able to do that of its own accord. And Councilor why did he Greenway. not go back to the okay. state government? Thank you. That was my question. Thank you. Um, just yes or no, Mr Jackson, did you hear that comment? I heard that comment. Thank you. Um, Councillor Best, did you have a question? <laughs> um, thank you, Bill, for coming in this evening. And um, quite rightly, we're not here to debate the channel, we're here to debate how council can improve its image in the public light in light of the previous meeting. Bill, you are, um, and you're not here representing anybody other than yourself, I recognise that, but you are a CEO of a very large organisation. Um, how would such uh, a meeting conducted as it was here uh, be played out in your professional environment? How, how might that end, Bill? We certainly would have, wouldn't have left the people standing in this channel just along here for two hours and 20 minutes before the discussion even started and left them standing there for another two hours while it was discussed, that was disgraceful. And the feedback after the meeting, you did touch on it. Um, the we feedback were, we after were, we it was anger. The chamber, but what was the feedback in the elevator and downstairs? The feedback in the elevator and downstairs was anger. And I note that there was 1,071 people watching on the podcast, so we didn't endear ourselves very well, I would imagine. No, no, sir. But thank you for coming in this evening, and I do appreciate, Bill, an apology demanded is no apology at all. This council needs to be willing on that front. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Bess. Um, Mr Jackson, can I just ask a question? Were you, you were aware that there was another controversial item that evening, the one Yes, I was, care, ma'am. And so you do understand yes. that that was debated before your item? Madam Mayor, the... I don't want to argue the point about the, the, the Edelong dredging or anything. No, no, no. The only thing I came here for tonight was I had with me that night 150 people that attended a meeting down at my club. I felt obliged to come here tonight and seek or speak for the, the, the apology resolution. Thank you. Um, but you do, my question was, you understand oh, yes, that I was there aware that was a lot of people There were a lot of people here to discuss other things. For your matter, yes? Yep. Um, and Mr Jackson, can I also ask, are you aware that the councillors actually didn't receive the motion that went to the meeting until, I don't know, maybe a couple of minutes before the meeting commenced? Yes. You are aware of that? Well, that's what you said that night. Yes. Okay. All right. No, just clarifying that. Councillor McLaughlin, did you have a question for the speaker? Oh, I just want to thank Bill for, for coming in. And um, I, I want to thank Bill uh, on behalf Do you have of... a question, Mr. Councillor McLaughlin? Yeah, uh, question. Come on. Question. My, my question, Bill, is um, what, 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 the, what is the general feeling of Edelong now towards the council? Um, that it is political, very political. Unfortunate, but that's what it is. And hopefully we can rectify that. That seems to be the general view from the, uh, <laughs> the, the meeting that I attended and spoke on at the time that, that uh, it was... Councillor Lachlan, do you have a question? No. That's okay, thank, thank, thank you. you. Um, Councillor Vincent. Um, Mr Jackson, thanks for coming in tonight and speaking with us. Um, I did hear that you were the CEO of a, a large company. I'm just wondering which one that was. I'm the CEO of Edelong Beach War Memorial Club Limited. Ah, and so there was a meeting in your club on the night when you had 150 people there. When we had 550 people. And uh, when that you were was all... on the night of the 10th of May. And, and when you were aware that uh, a lot of people were going to come to the council chambers. I asked that they do that. Um, did you have any idea of the seating capacity? Not a number of the, the... I didn't have any idea of the numbers that would turn up, and I had certainly had no idea of how the council was set up. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Vincent. Councillor Marquette. Yeah, thank you very much, Bill, for, for coming in this evening. Just a quick question. I'm just wondering, um, you've come in here to speak on a motion, um, which is obviously... Um, trying to point out an issue that we may have in regards to process. After receiving a couple of questions, obviously aggressive questions, and then a bit of a breakdown or a shakedown of, you know, if, if your involvement within the people that came here um, could have possibly even caused the issue, do you, do you feel any better after receiving any of those questions? No, but I'm not going to go out of this room and say that I had those questions either. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just wondering if the tone of, um, of, of, the, of those questions makes you feel like that this is actually going to get any, any airtime. Councillor Marquette, thank you for the question. I will not 
be answering, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Marquette. Um, Councillor Pillen, you've got a question for the speaker? Yes, quickly. Yeah. Thanks, Bill, for coming in. Um, the <coughs> Council's public apology is that you'd like something in writing from all of us as a group from the Council or is it from the Mayor or the whole, whole lot of us to uh, the patrons of the club that came in? Thank you, Councillor Pillen. I, I'm not here to tell you how to make an apology or how to make a public apology. If the public apology is from Madam Mayor on behalf of the councillors, that is what all we would require. And if that public apology is just in the press, that's all we need. Okay. Yep. We don't need a, a personally written, hand gold embossed envelope that goes to every member that I couldn't even give you the list of. Yep. Something in the media. Yeah. Yep. Something okay. in the media Thanks, would be Bill. quite happy. Top. Thank you, Councillor Pillen. Uh, thank you, Mr. Jackson. You can take a seat. Thank you um, very much. Councillors, do we have a motion? As is. Councillor Best, moved by Councillor Best. Is there a seconder? Councillor Pillen? Uh, Councillor Best, did you want to open debate? Thank you, Madam Mayor. In, at the beginning of this whole thing, I'd like to thank the staff, Shane, your team. Um, they did a very uh, exemplary job in a difficult time with this gallery clearly <laughs> overloaded. Um, it raises the issues of the council being inducted into this building, because I don't know where the fire exits are. That's a matter that will come up in the future. Um, the mayor herself raised the issue of the corridors in the building and how people should leave the egress and accesses open and then pursued to have, proceeded to have the meeting run for two and a half hours before the people could be heard. There is no excuse in this council, and Councillor Pillan, I hear your question, and the answer to that question is, ladies and gentlemen, I, I apologise to you for what happened on the 14th of May. And if each of us does that and votes for this, then we apologise. We're not perfect, neither is the community. We're all uh, emotionally charged, we all have our views. But at the end of the day, in 22 years, I've never seen senior citizens sitting on the floor of this chamber or any chamber I've ever been in while I sit in a high back leather chair make myself feel good. I've never seen it. It just doesn't happen, but it did in this chamber. So the 14th of May will go down as a day of infamy in relation to how a meeting should not be conducted. Councillor Gail Collins, you know, you, you are making your way as a young lady with a young family and you in no way, I believe, Madam Mayor, should have been berated as you, I believe, berated that uh, lady. Councillor That's Best, my view. point of order. I believe, um, and I'm could I just, to believe I it. need to clarify that Clock's point. Clock's still running. Yep. I need to clarify Clock's that point. Running. That Councillor, as the chair of this meeting, it is my requirement to make sure that motions are clear and understood. <clears throat> the motion required some clarification. Um, so that's what happened at that meeting. Uh, Thank Councillor you, Best, continue. Thank you, Madam Mayor, for your clarity. Um, the clarity actually required, because I listened to the podcast again today, and if anybody's in any misapprehension as to what I'm trying to say here, I'm happy for the ladies, if you'd all like to, is turn the podcast on and listen to the nine minutes and 27 seconds of oration that went on with Councillor Gail Collins over the motion. The motion wasn't even live in the chamber, ladies and gentlemen. It hadn't been seconded. If you don't like something in this room, don't vote for it. If you don't like something, listen to the speakers and then you can actually debate it and learn because you learn from listening, not speaking. And nine minutes has never been consumed in this chamber on a matter that isn't even live before the chair. Councillor what Best, again, just point of point order of, and just point of clarification. The clock's running. That as chair, it's necessary to ensure that motions that are put to the chamber are clear and well understood. So I understand your point in saying that the motion was not live, but it needed clarification, it was unclear. Please continue, Thank you for Councillor your apology Best. to Councillor Gail Collins. The community is the one I'd like us all to be apologising to. At the end of the day, this council <coughs> did not conduct itself well. It can learn from these mistakes. It can go forward and, as the Speaker said, it can, it can actually be the champion of the day, but there's no way to go about the way we did it on the night. Look, the motion the motion's pretty clear on the steps. We need to apologise. We need to be trained. We need to learn. No one in this room is guilty of not knowing. You don't know, but you just don't know, and it's not your fault you don't know. But the difference is, is that you ask questions when you don't know and you learn from that lack of knowledge. But when you continue to hurdle down the page of knowing everything, I said to one of my colleagues, thank God we're not on the bomb disposal game because this place would have cut the blue wire for sure by now. They wouldn't have listened. And that's the difference. And that hole that we dug on the 14th was a classic case of politics, opinions, uh, we're not having an urgency. I mean, I've been the mayor. You don't have all these people sitting in the room and the mayor not curious while they're here. 
that motion was written by four or five councillors, you know, and tried to be flushed out. The councillor, Gail Collins, didn't write it. Well, and no, she best, didn't. Your time is and up. I've got enough seven Did seconds because you need... you've cut them out of me. Okay. And therefore, you tried, you, you tried in vain to make Councillor Gail Collins look poor on the floor. When you need to look strong as the mayor, you need to be the champion of this council. Don't bring this council down. All right, thank chance. you, Councillor Best. Councillor Pillen, did you want to speak as seconder of the motion? Thanks, uh, Madam Mayor. Just briefly, um, look, I think we it was a very passionate evening where, and I uh, support this, that we do make a public apology to those that were in here. Uh, the reason it got to that position, I think, because for months uh, what they've been asking for has been denied in this council. So um, I will support the motion and I hope that uh, everybody sees fit that we do it as a group unanimously. Thank, thank you, you. Councillor Pillan. Councillor Mertens. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, and thank you to Mr Jackson, just around the corner there, <laughs> can't see you, uh, for coming along and speaking tonight. Um, look, I'm going to speak against the motion. Um, that was, you know, a, a circus of a meeting. I don't think anyone can deny that. Um, I think that what we had was a, a confluence of terrible events. We had uh, Wombrel, we had dredging, we had other things as well. Um, that was never going to be a perfect meeting. <clears throat> it was always going to be heated. It was going to be heated with the Wombrel matter. It was going to be heated with the dredging matter. Um, unfortunately, there were things that happened that stoked those flames. Um, part of that was us not having access to an emergency motion that we were told was coming and then was told it multiple times uh, wasn't going to come um, and kind of trying to read that on the fly and trying to deal with that on the fly. There was, you know, a lot of, a lot of attention coming to that. Um, and while I thank um, Mr Jackson for speaking again tonight uh, and for the passion with which the community spoke at the last meeting, um, I don't think an apology from this council uh, is appropriate. I'm happy, very happy, to apologise to, to Mr Jackson myself um, as, a, as a resident, um, as a as a, a councillor here tonight um, for the conduct um, that I saw and what happened in that meeting, but I don't think it's appropriate for the council to apologise. Um, I know with the, we've got the press and the gallery, they can make that as a meet my personal media apology. Um, other councillors can choose to do as they wish, but I think that this council has been, as, as it has been uh, outlined so many times, is a very big council. We're the third biggest in New South Wales, we're the fifth biggest in the country. Um, and yes, on some nights we will have multiple issues that are very important to people. On that night, we had Wombrel, we had dredging. Wombrel uh, had the benefit of being on the agenda. That was something that's been coming to us for months, something that we've actually deferred for months as well to get more information. Um, that was on the agenda. That had to be dealt with first. Um, it could have been brought, the dredging issue could have been brought first if the councillors had presented with their, with their urgency motion. That could have been dealt with urgently as the first thing, but it wasn't and we didn't have it, so it couldn't be. Um, yes, there was politics being played, um, but politics isn't only um, the bastion of the political parties. It's not. Um, there are a lot of members on this, at least a fifth of the members of this council are, are independents, uh, and so politics can be played by independents as well. Shock horror to a lot of people. Um, I voted on that night um, to support council's um, application for dredging because I knew, and I'm following that meeting at Bill's Club, um, that state government was not going to act and that we had to act. And that's why I was happy to vote. And I would have voted on that whether there were 150 people in this room or not. Because on that night, I made the decision that I was going to change my mind. Um, we can all change our minds, but we don't get changed our mind when we get threatened by um, other councillors or whoever else. Um, so as again, I apologise to you, Bill. I apologise to uh, those members who, of the community who were here that night. Um, but I don't think it should be an official apology from this council. This council has um, moved for a minute extension, please, Mayor. Yes, uh, move Councillor Sundstrom, second at Councillor McGregor. Yep. I don't think it is the role of this council to apologise um, for decisions that we make um, or for uh, other opportunities we have here. Um, there are matters that we have to discuss. There are matters that we're not going to get to tonight that will be deferred um, possibly for, for weeks and months. That's just the nature of how much we have to deal with in this council. Um, dredging is an important matter. It's a matter that we've dealt with at probably half a dozen meetings now. Um, and it got dealt with at the May 14 meeting and I was happy that it did. Um, in terms of, of some of the other options in that motion, um, I think no councillor here would be um, saying that we don't have a generous um, professional development course uh, allocation uh, and I would encourage any councillors um, to take advantage of that if they do want to go to, what was it, it was a, a meeting, whatever it was. <coughs> Um, I would encourage any councillors to do that, but I don't think it's, uh, again, uh, something that councillors should be forced into. 
Um, I I'm, once again encourage any other councillors to apologise personally, but I don't think it's a matter for the council to actually officially apologise. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Mertens. Councillor Vincent. Um, question first, Madam Mayor, and then if you could just refresh my memory. You said about an urgency motion or what was happening there again on the night? Uh, on the night, um, look, it was unclear. There was lots of rumours that there might be an urgency motion, but when I asked prior to the meeting of the councillors, they were a little bit vague about whether there was an urgency motion, and then it appeared, I think, a couple of minutes before the meeting started. And that urgency motion was? Uh, to do with the dredging of Brisbane Water. So, so council, the, the council didn't realise that motion was coming to the chamber until... We had nothing in front of us. A couple of minutes before the meeting started. Uh, I, that's my recollection. I, I think that's right. Yes, the staff are verifying that. Yes. Right. I'll speak. Thank you, Councillor Vincent. Um, thanks for the clarification, Madam Mayor. Just for the, uh, the record, I won't be voting for the, um, the motion that we've got here at the moment. But I have got a few comments to say. And um, it was a busy night. There were people from the community who wanted to be in their council to listen to, to the debate in their council. And for the people that were packed in here, I would unobservedly apologise for them being in here on the night packed in. And, um, you know, we, we could have come close to some uh, issues with our h and and evacuations if that had happened. Um, there were elderly people who were on their feet for a long time. Now, was that council's fault? I don't think council had any recollection that there would be that many people coming in on the night, like we've just heard. We didn't know this motion was going to be debated until two minutes before um, the meeting. Um, and I'm saying, um, stop it. <laughs> the, and to the elderly people and the residents who came in to see their council in action, I sincerely apologise for that. But then I asked the question, what can we do as a council? Or do, we, do we expand the chamber? Uh, do we say, when we see a lot of people coming in, which, which motion are you here for? And then do we limit 10, 15 people for each of that motion, so we get equity on the on the people who get into the chamber. Like we probably should have a, a maximum seating capacity, and as soon as we start to reach that, we should say no more. So maybe we can review our code of meeting practice and and have a look at that. Maybe we can do um, people management a little bit better as as far as that goes. Apart from that, um, I, I can't see how how you do it, bar to say you know if there's three or four items on the agenda that night, that you limit it to say 15 people for for each. Uh, agenda, and then you've got two or three speakers for each agenda. I mean, we had the childcare centre that night, and that was a that was a, a an issue which um, struck a chord with the community. We had people here with signs, um, and I noticed after each motion or discussion was had, some people left the chamber, so the the numbers did decrease. But when it came to the um, the discussion and the debate, I find it difficult to apologise there because all I saw on the night was that it was a classic cost shift from the state government to the local government. It was saying to the local government, you pay for what the state government should really pay for. And all 15 councillors here are here to look after the betterment of the community. Now, it can be argued that it was a safety issue. No, no brainer. It was a safety issue. But who had charter of fixing that issue? And it was the state government. When they didn't do it, when the council tried to encourage them, what happened? We had to spend ratepayers' money to fix that issue. So we came in and we supported that. Robust discussion, big debate, but it all came down because of classic cost shifting from the current state government, who should have looked at that and fixed that. Can I just have another minute to wrap uh, up? Move Councillor McGregor, second to Councillor Mertens, all in favour? Yes. Now, the way the meeting was run, I've been on council for eight, nine years or so. I've seen some robust discussions. I saw it at the old Wyong where it used to be the bear pit and people would just get beat up, you know, like because a bit of that was how it was, the meeting was done. I thought the mayor handled that, that situation very well. I thought the mayor tried to keep control of the meeting when it was necessary. Um, I saw some councillors fanning the meeting and inciting people to have uproar or to interject. I saw some councillors around here that would look at the community and look at them as if almost jeering them on while people were trying to have a debate. So I didn't think that was helpful at all. That, that wasn't helping the way we had the discussion. Uh, Councillor Best, what's your point of order? Clearly those comments are directed in my quarter. 
And it's impugning that I looked at the gallery and did something. My God, I looked at the gallery. You can't be serious. Uh, Councillor Best, I, looked at the, I don't I accept guilty, your guilty, point. Guilty, madam, may I look at the Best, gallery? take your seat. I don't I accept your point of order. That's Councillor it. Vincent. Take me away. Thank, thank you, madam. Thank you, madam. Look, I'll unobservedly apologise if Councillor Best has some uh, problem or guilt trip that he was inciting the crowd on the night. That's, that's his view and he thinks that's what I'm insinuating. I'll unobservedly apologise to Councillor Best that he has those thoughts, that he thinks that Councillor he was the one Vincent, you're running doing out of the inciting. Time. But we can't step away from it. I thought the Mayor did a good job. When it all got too heated, she hit the circuit breaker, she let it cool down. Even on the way out, like Councillor McGregor was saying, there were councillors that were abused on the way out. We went out, we had a cool off came back and we came back in and we had Councillor Vincent, as much as I'd like to let you continue on that vein, I'm going to have to bring you to an end. Um, Councillor McGregor. I move that the motion be put. Uh, so all in favour that the motion be put. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Um, those opposed? Okay, so the motion be put. Um, Councillor Best, did you need to close debate on that? Yes, thank you. Since I don't ask for extensions here, I'll give it a little bit of a go. Councillors, um, and thank you, um, Councillor Mertens, for being honest and, and, and apologising. I do genuinely respect that. Richard also said it was a bit of a circus and, um, and that politics was played, and he's absolutely 100% correct. This tonight was our chance, Councillors, on the podcast with you know, 500 or 1,000 people watching us, Councillors. This was our chance to say to them, look, we could have done it better. We didn't get it right. You have to concede as Councillor... Mertens and Councillor Vincent, who I never agree with that often, actually agree with him tonight, he apologised and I apologise unreservedly. As far as voting against the motion, councillors, because you think it's not a matter for council as a, as a collective, we are a collective. We are the community's representatives. The motion's saying simply that um, we recognise the adjournment of the meeting, we, we apologise in point three, uh, that council asked the, uh, uh, the CEO to provide um, better facilities for the community, including spill-out rooms, which Councillor Vincent touched on. We could put big screen tellies in the foyer. What's wrong with that? Just a bit of common sense around people. We get spill-out rooms. We also get some uh, training in this room. So if smoke comes out of those, those air conditioning vents, we know where to go. I have no idea how to get to this building. I don't know this building. We haven't got that training yet. God forbid smoke did come out of the building with all those people in this room on that night because they wouldn't have got out. It would have been a disaster. And the Mayor flagged these issues herself at the beginning of the meeting, yet we let this go. And we let it go on the basis that we didn't know it was coming. I mean, we all knew the people were here. It was on Facebook all day, the day before and the day before that. You cannot hide behind it. You can't hide behind the fact that you didn't know or you weren't trained. Because at the middle ages that we find ourselves in and some younger, you don't need to be taught about common courtesy and common sense. That doesn't need to be taught. And common sense would have told you that room was a debacle. The motion goes on to suggest that the council, as Richard said, we shouldn't be dictated to. No, we shouldn't. But the general manager can facilitate and send a memo out, Mr General Manager, saying that these training courses are available so that we can all do this better, collectively, as a team of council. And then, of course, I think, last but not least, to Shane and Jade and all the team that have managed the meeting so well over the last eight months of this council, they did an extraordinarily good job whilst we were here in our leatherback chairs downstairs trying to help people and make them understand the difficulties that the facility faced. So, councillors, you know, you can vote this down because you just think you can vote it down. But as I said earlier, and my wife reminds me, that an apology demanded is no apology at all. It has to be given genuinely from the heart. We should take this opportunity, podcast running, community in the chamber, to say we didn't get it right and we're sorry for that. It's that simple. I mean, Kevin Rudd was able to do it, but not Central Coast City Council. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Councillors, uh, Councillor McGregor, Councillor McGregor. Thank you, Councillor Best. I'll put the motion moved by Councillor Best, seconded by Councillor Pillen. All in favour of the motion? Councillor Marquette, Councillor Gail Collins, Pillen, McLaughlin, Burke and Best. Those opposed? Councillor Merton, Sundstrom, Matthews, McGregor, Greenaway, Vincent, Hogan and Smith. Thank Councillor Holstein, what are you doing on this one? I'm sorry, I missed the meeting. <laughs> so you're abstaining then? Oh, I wasn't here and I haven't seen the podcast. I think I'll be doing something later than the night and actually see what they go on. So I don't think it's appropriate for me to make comments. Okay, so your abstention. Okay, so the motion is lost, councillors. 
Um, councillors, we're moving on to the next invited speaker. And Councillor Holstein, you're going to come and take the chair because I've declared on this item. Um, so it's. Um, I would invite Ms. Sue Dengate. So speaking on item 8.1, the rescission motion, and I'm sure the staff will capably. <laughs> okay, um, this is Ben uh, You have the floor. Thank you, councillors and staff. Um, firstly, the objective of this project, the, the mast, when the New South Wales government gifted the mast to Gosford Council, was to honour the ex HMAS Adelaide for her distinguished career and all those who served upon her. When the Central Coast Artificial Reef Project, of which I was one of the eight people, was first notified of this in 2009, it became our vision to have it located close to the Marine Rescue Base uh, to enable a relay station to be mounted on it to improve the exceptionally poor radio reception for seagoing vessels out of um, the haven. Um, Councillor Sundstrom, McGregor and Matthews have cited reasons for this change in this amendment um, and I'd like to address most of them but not all of them, just the important ones. Uh, I'd like to refer to the locations rather than the site number but a name, one, being, uh, one of, of them being adjacent to the Marine Rescue Base and the other west of the Skillion instead of the numbers to lessen confusion. So whilst I can address all of the objections, with only three minutes, I prefer just to address the main ones. Councillors stated that the one adjacent to the Marine Rescue Base is on a steep incline, difficult access for elderly and disabled, whereas the west, west of the Skillion can be accessed directly from the car park. When I refer to the incline that was mentioned near the Marine Rescue Base, it is easily managed by the elderly, simply following the council-built pathway around the, railway, around the whale watching platforms. As far as the access to the west of the Skillion, it involves descending an, un an unstable rock and mud embankment from the said car park and then rock hopping. It is my opinion that this is hardly elderly friendly this site is also low from the road and therefore hidden from view for the mast. Councillors said that the west of Skillion site had no impact on the utilisation of the site as a wedding vin venue. Really? The entire haven can be used for weddings. Surely a three metre section is not going to preclude this use. To put a wedding venue as a reason not to pay respect to, to those who have served our country on the ex-HMAS Adelaide is a disgrace and a slap in the face for those who lay their lives on the line for all of us. Further, the opportunity to improve the marine safety surely should be paramount, paramount in comparison to, let's say, a wedding reception. The Navy is steeped in tradition and the crew still considers this ship part of their lives as it was their home. The crew's wishes for the mast are to uh, serve the community and therefore continue the, leg the legacy and mystique of the ex-HMAS Adelaide. They also want it to be highly visible at the top of the hill overlooking the Adelaide, not hidden away um, at the bottom of a rock shelf. It needs to be where it will remind the general public that the ex-HMAS Adelaide is there and therefore prompt them to remember the personnel who served on her and the sacrifices that all defence personnel have made in, on their behalf. That is why it should be at the site adjacent to the Marine Rescue Base, highly visible and proud, and still serving the community by greatly assisting the Marine Rescue Base. Mrs. Uh, would you like an extension of time? Yes, please, I would. Councillors, thank, thank you. you. Councillor Gail Collins, a second to Councillor McGregor. You thank have an you. extra minute. Thank you, Councillors. Councillors stated back in 2014, the former Gosford Council had already passed a motion deciding the site, the West Skillion site. This was done without consultation with anyone and was purely financially based, focusing on the Gosford Council's thought that they were committing 100% of the funds. 
After trying over 12 months to secure a meeting with the Gosford Council CEO, the last letter that I sent was in August 2014, to discuss how we could secure funds from other sources and being only given letters stating why it could not be done, I organised for a meeting with Adam Crouch MP and a member of the Defence Force Fleet Base, Petty Officer Scott Barker, whose express duties include rejuvenation of memorials such as this mast at no cost to our ratepayers. This, thanks to Adam, has been completed and the mast remains in storage fully restored and at no cost to us. Councillors say there is potential to lower costs associated with the West Skillion site. In fact, the ongoing costs will be far greater and the mast will be in danger of damage by the sea and this is advised by... This is advised by um, Petty Officer Barker. I'd just like to quote something from um, one of the commissioning crew that was sent to me today. He says, we take pride in our ship when we sailed in her. We take pride in our ship for the public to see and we would take pride of the symbol that represents our ship on the high side for all to see and a reminder to everyone that this great ship and her crew defended and protected this country in all of her life. That's from HMAS Adelaide Commissioning Crew, Alan Dean. Thank you. you. Stay at the podium. Councillors, do we have any questions of Mrs Dengate? Councillor Sundstrom. Thank you, Mr Deputy Mayor. And, and thank you, Mrs Dengate, for um, addressing the meeting tonight. Just a quick question or two for you, if I may. Certainly. Um, were you aware of what the content of the briefings that uh, councillors were that of this council were given in relation to this matter? No, I'm not particularly aware of it, no. Okay. Uh, would you be surprised to learn that you've raised about three points that was not presented to the councillors? I certainly would because it's been of public information for many years. Okay. Um, you'll note that, uh, and I, I've given you already an amendment. Yes. Yeah. Um, that was actually sent to me by somebody that you sent it to, yes. Good. Yeah, yeah. well, that's why I put it out so that um, people would see it. Mm -hmm. um, um, question, yeah, yeah, yeah. Does the uh, does the timber of the amendment suit you better than what was originally mooted? I believe that, irrespective, it's time wasting. the The information is clear, and the wishes of the crew are clear. Thank you, Mrs. Bengali. Thank you, Best. Thank you, Mr. Acting Mayor. Good to see you up there in the seat. Nostalgic. Um, Sue, thank you for coming this evening. Much I'm from the Forgotten North, so must forgive me, OK? I don't forget you. It's thank right. you. Thank you, Sue. Is there anything compelling that you can offer us, and I appreciate you didn't quite get to the end of your notes there, um, that you might share with I from the North that... Councillor, best question. Would, I can share from the North that would change my view. Um, on the current resolution before the chamber, notwithstanding the um, the, the uh, subsequent motion, it's really not a rescission anymore. It's a. Do you understand the question, Mr. No, I would like it clarified. If, if is you there know. anything else that you? In ten words or less, can you pose the question for the speaker? Oh, Mr. Acting Mayor, um, <laughs> is there anything, Sue, that you can further share with us to help the council, the big council from up north and from down the far south, that would help us? with our view on this matter. We were unanimous in our original decision. What's the compelling reasons for us to change that? Well, it, it appears that the, the main reason for wanting it changed was to have a wedding venue opportunity. It's important. Which is, but it's a big haven and a beautiful haven and many aspects of it are equally as, as good as that. This particular <coughs> site is direct line of sight to the marine rescue um, base and will allow a relay station to be put on it so that it picks up um, great reception. The other site is particularly bad. It is very low. It is close to the ocean. It's closer, <clears throat> the mast would be closer to the ocean than it was when it was on the ship and, and will uh, incur a, a great deal of danger in, in rust, uh, particularly from the waves on East Coast lows, and it will in incur great expense to maintain it. Thank you, Mr. So Dengate. I suppose, um, Mr. You have Acting a subsequent Mayor. question, do you, Absolutely. So, uh, Thank you. From, what is that? <laughs> thank you. Could I get it in? Um, is there any... So, therefore, there is no reason you can see that we shouldn't maintain our current position 
that was unanimous in the chamber. Is that what you're saying to me? Absolutely. I mean, other correct. than being a good wedding venue, it's almost as good as Nora Head. There's a direct line. There is a direct line of sight. That. Thank you. We have other councillors uh, wish to ask questions. Councillor uh, Rebecca Gar Collins. Thanks for coming in, Sue Dengate. Now, would you be able to give some clarification around the community groups that were involved? I believe you touched on um, some some funding. Community groups were involved in that. The Is Central right? Coast Artificial Reef Project originally, um, as I said, wanted saw that as our our mission to to put the um, uh, the mast there. Since um, then, it's been my personal mission to make it happen. We have had. Uh, we recognise that the state government has funded some of the money. We've also had um, a, a, a dinner where we, we got uh, more funding as well. A big part of it was the funding to rejuvenate the mast, which cost us nothing because it was part of the Defence Force, and that I found out quite accidentally when uh, I was actually attending a reunion of the sailors. My son was one of those sailors on board the Adelaide. And um, that, at that reunion, I met uh, Petty Officer Scott Barker, who said, we fixed them for nothing. So that saved council and ratepayers an enormous amount of money. Thank you, Mrs. Dengate. Does that answer your question, Councillor Collins? Uh, Councillor Chris Burke. Uh, yes, um, Sue, you mentioned about um, the mask and, and also the reception. I was told that they're looking at putting a camera up there um, to oversee it from that point, and it's the best point. Um, could you just elaborate on that? Yes, that's that's correct. Thank you, Chris. Um, because it's a high site, the, the cameras will be able to look directly down on the exclusion zone of the, the Adelaide site. That exclusion zone is so that no... Um, Fishing is done on there, and unfortunately, fishing is done on there. We constantly dive on it and find fishing lures, which are quite dangerous, and it's it's taking away a, a, a fish, fish, fish aggregation site, um, if you might. So by mounting cameras up there, they, they can keep a watch on that. The other site is far too low to have that done. Thank you, Mrs Dengate. Uh, Councillor McLaughlin, do you have a question? Uh, just Just wanted to clarify the reception for your um, marines, the marine um, uh, safety thing. Marine You're saying that, that to move it, you get lesser reception for, for... from From the other site, which is west of the Skillion, yes, because it's not in direct line of sight. Okay. However, the site that's up near the dog park, if you will, near the... Um, the Marine Rescue Station, it's a direct line and the the, uh, the reception will be fabulous there. It, reception is incredibly poor. Uh, you often can't get on to Marine Rescue at all. And in the case of, a, of an emergency, it would be diabolical. Okay. Thank you, Mrs Dengate. Any further questions, councillors? If not, thank you, Mrs Dengate. Thank you. Uh, Mrs Norton, uh, would you mind coming to the podium? Thank you very much. The floor is yours, Mrs Norton. Sorry? When you're ready. Oh, right. Um, <clears throat> so, um, thank you to the Deputy Mayor and Councillors for enabling me to come and address uh, Council. Um, I was told that um, I couldn't discuss an alternative site, as Ms Dengate has just spoken and could only refer to the, the, the site that is now um, in council as known as site one. And um, I represent people who use that area of the haven um, in their ones and twos, uh, walkers, exercise people, um, the weddings, and I think uh, uh, so Dengate must be aware that that particular spot is more popular than most for um, that open air type of wedding. Um, so um, our objections to that site um, is that we feel it would dominate uh, the whole of that remaining peaceful green 
um, green sward where people have picnics and um, the, um, it's in constant use. Um, some of the dog walkers are leash-free area. Um, I was also told that the Marine Rescue had withdrawn their um, desire to have uh, um, uh, wireless connection. Why, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> but um, the line of sight, and if I may be allowed to uh, remark on the alternative area, um, uh, if I can do that, the area I think is being misrepresented. There's where, if you've got your photographs with you of that of the sort of fish eye, fish eye uh, photograph of the um, haven, um, the site people have t t appeared to have, and Ms. Derengate as well. It is not too low to the. It's up on the area where. The uh, landfill from the top of the uh, Skillion went and uh, has been made into a temporary car park right along from the entry into the um, haven uh, to the south where it looks directly at the two buoys that mark the site of the ship. Um, in the daytime they're yellow, at night they wink. and um, But it's well above the... Um, level of the road that goes round the haven, or round the oval. And would you like some additional time? I would, please, Thank you, yes. councillors. Thank you, Councillor McGregor and Sundstrom. Yeah. Thank you, Mrs Norton. You have another minute? Uh, right. Well, it's just, um, I've almost finished. It's just that um, uh, we feel that this dominating place for the, um, um, for, uh, in site one, uh, is going to be extremely difficult for any disabled people. Or um, I, I had to uh, look after somebody for three years as a uh, in a wheelchair, and I certainly no, would not be able to push it from the um, beginning of that access road up to the um, up to the site of the. And I do not think that you get a clear view of the um, boys to the ship site. Thank you very much. For Thank listening. you, Mrs. Norton. Right. Well, if you just stay at the podium, councillors, do we have any questions? Councillor Sundstrom. Yes, if I may. Uh, thank you, Mrs. Norton. And I'd like to thank um, the acting mayor and the remainder of the councillors for uh, allowing the debate to stray off the rescission in the case of both speakers. Uh, <clears throat> but a question for you, please, Mrs Norton. Um, do you think it's important that councillors be supplied with all relevant information when they're making decisions for the community? Certainly I do, yes. And no. I thought this was a classic case where you were not all supplied with the... This has been going on since uh, 2012. And uh, and then after it was um, an, another site was mentioned, the the one was then get mentioned site two, and um, I have the photograph here of the uh, of the haven, and um, it's um, uh, uh, I I think that it is um, it would be a great pity to see the. Thank you, Mrs. Norton. Councillor Pillen, you have a question. Thank you, Matt. Or not Madam Mayor, sorry, Mr yeah. Mayor. <laughs> Mrs Norton, thank you for coming in. Um, just two questions, please. Have you discussed um, with the Marine Rescue Base the radio reception from the site that you're talking about? We've heard that it's um, going to be advantageous up on the hill. Have, have you discussed that with the Marine Rescue Base? <laughs> I have not um, discussed it with them, only with uh, the... Uh, dive school owner at the other end of the beach, Haven okay. Beach. So we're not Thank sure you. that that would actually improve that. Um, the other question is the dimensions. Um, I'm not sure, are you aware of the dimensions that we're talking about? You're saying it's going to take up room in the dog park and where the weddings are? No, the no, nowhere near the dog park. It's above that. No, no, that. no, but in regards to where um, site one, where we had agreed to have it, you said that that's going to impact 
Can you tell me what the size and dimensions of it are? Are you aware of I have, if I look at the plan, I have the plans. Okay. No, this is, no one's aware of the size, she has the plan. Okay. Are there further questions, councillors? If not, thank you, Mrs. North. Could I make one? A, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll allow one. For one, one going, more comment. I don't think there is a single soul who does not want the, um, the mast somewhere in the haven. I think, though, that all us individual people um, should have our first consideration should be the haven and then the, um, the mast in its best place. Thank you, Mrs Thank Norton. You. Probably get in trouble for giving you that leeway now. Oh dear. Um, you warming my seat, Councillor Best? No, I wouldn't like to warm it up to you. Okay, thank, thank you, Councillors. Uh, look, I'll remind the Councillors this is a rescission motion, and the motion will be initially to deal with the rescission. If the rescission is one and the matter is rescinded, then there'll be a subsequent motion. If the rescission is not one, then end of debate and we move on. So, with that in mind, Councillor Sunstrom, as mover of the rescission, you have the floor. Why well, receive the motion from the, the motion from the meeting of? So, uh, could you just move the motion so I get a seconder and then you can get into the boat? Well, there's an amendment to the motion. Oh, sorry. Sorry, it's a rescission motion. You have yep, to deal yep. with the rescission no, you, first. No, you're right. You're right. So you Excuse move me. to rescind the motion of yep. the I think it was 14th of yep. May. Okay. You don't need help, Councillor Best. Yep. I, yeah. Thanks. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the rescission. Motion is that, that this council rescind the motion 3.3 of the ordinary meeting dated May 14th, 2018. Thank you. Do I have a second to that motion? Thank you, Councillor McGregor. Okay, Councillor Sunstrom, you have the floor for debate. Now, I advise the councillors that um, I have an amendment and I hope they can get it up on the board for okay, us. Okay, so you are, you are, as part of uh, speaking to the rescission, you're going uh, to. Uh, okay. As, no, no, I don't have a problem with you speaking to what you're subsequently going to put up with, but it might be good if you put, mount your reasons on why you're seeking a rescission. For the rescission, yeah, OK. Thank you. All right. OK, whilst we did have a briefing prior to the ordinary meeting, uh, it appears that there is more information on this topic that may have helped councillors with their decision-making process had it been pre presented. Without apportioning any blame or what's likely to be just an oversight, it's important that when councillors consider matters that they have as wide a scope of information available to them as possible. We found, out, we found out within the business paper that there were nine submissions from the public that came forth when the matter was on exhibition as part of a DA process. That information was never presented to councillors in, by way of a briefing. In discussions that I've had with residents, I was informed that as far back as 2012, Gosford City Council was planning the site, to site the master at the Terrigal Haven. That council resolved to make investigations. No information in relation to those investigations was presented to the councillors. I've been presented with a list of reasons that favour the site known as Site 2 that were never presented to councillors. Since the publication of the business paper, I've been contacted by a resident with supportive information relative to Site 1. And in fact, tonight we've heard other information that had not been presented to the councillors by way of briefing supporting Site 1 as well. Without prejudicing what decision the councillors might come to with a fuller understanding of the issues, I ask the fellow councillors to support this rescission motion so that we can give the matter the serious consideration that it deserves. Thank you. Councillor Sanson, before I ask for um, uh, the second or any other debate, I would allow you just to tout what your subsequent motion might be. No debate, just tout what okay. the subsequent motion is. Right. I think that might assist some of the councillors. Okay. That this council will require the... Uh, staff through the CEO to present us with a briefing, um, not restricted to, but including, one, the results of the reports of all investigations into the long-term plans and the siting of the mast of the ex-HMAS satellite, carried out by both ex-Gosford City Council and the Central Coast Council. Number two, that submissions received whenever the matter of the siting of the mast was uh, 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 sorry, the ex HMAS Adelaide was put out on public exhibition. And the reason, number three, the reason why the initial process included a development application, but subsequently the DA process was dispensed with. Okay, thank you. They have that. Do I have a, uh, other speakers? Is the seconder Councillor McGregor? 
Oh, now they're coming up. Um, Jeff asked me to support his decision after talking to local residents and stakeholders um, and it seems that there might be some more information that's available that might be pertinent for us to know, could be informative for us to know, but the main reason why I'm supporting is because I'm interested to get the, dis um, the information, the inside lowdown on why we've decided to change from the former Gosford resolution. So obviously when you have a council come together you're going to have some legacy issues you're going to have some things carry over there's going to be some changes of direction so it's it's not necessarily about anything other than just getting more information and just making sure that we're making the right decision for the long term so i don't see the decision as putting the project in jeopardy or anything like that it's just about making sure we get our head around um everything that's there so that's why i'll be supporting the decision thank you councillor <laughs> councillor best oh, thank you, Mr. acting mayor um my question through you um, to the acting um, director of infrastructure. We've got more. We don't need a performing arts centre. We've got a fairly lot of acting here. Your question, um, Councillor Boris, um, if I may, and I know I haven't given you any notice on this, so I know you are the acting, but I'd like to ask um, what consultation was a part of your directory's recommendations to this chamber that I think resulted in a unanimous. Um, decision on this matter. Would you just off the cuff now? I wouldn't know. Sorry. Through to Madam Mayor. <laughs> I'll take oh, it. I won't Mayor. take a chance with that. Through Mr. Mayor. Been practising that. Mr. Mayor. Pa, uh, right. Apologies. Right. Um, there was some uh, consultation identified in, in the report on the 14th of May. Um, I haven't got anything additional to the, what's in that. What organisations were consulted to Excuse help us? Excuse me, Councillor Best. Allow the director I'm to I'm just finish. trying to narrow in on it. Well, that, that didn't there. I'll let him finish his answer. When he does, you can ask a subsequent question if you've got it. So in the report, it identifies local community groups, the Terrigal Womberal RSL sub-branch, RSL sub-branch, the Australian Royal Navy, Crown Lands, um, and some of the council staff. Um, in relation, to, yeah, discuss it with some of the residents in that particular area. Thank you, Mr. Bolgov. Councillor Best, you have a subsequent question. Were there any um, issues around disability access canvas that we're aware of? Um, through Mr. Mayor, that hasn't been identified to me. Right. At that, this point. Thank you. Thank you, no Mr. Bolgov. Boris. Um, no further questions, Councillor Best. Councillor Marquette. Thank you, Mr. Acting Mayor. I just wanted to actually put a, a question to Councillor Sundstrom. Um, he noted there that there had been, he'd been contacted by some residents with it, obviously with an issue with, with what had been unanimous <coughs> in the chamber. Um, how many residents, how many residents did contact Councillor Sundstrom in regards to this issue? Councillor Sundstrom. Excuse me. Yeah, there were two residents that contacted me and I arranged a meeting with them and they presented me with a, um, a raft of information. Um, however, before and, and this, in discussions before that meeting, um, they presented with that information as well. When I had the meeting with them, I went to uh, the Haven and I arrived there about 45 minutes early. I did my own straw poll of the community and found that there were people that were of the opinion that the second site was a, a, a viable site as well. So that's okay. why I formed the opinion that we need to get more information, we need to be across the whole topic and make a valued, uh, sorry. Thank, a, a, thanks, a, Councillor Sandrum. I think you've answered the question for Councillor Mark. Do you have another question or you wish to debate the matter? Oh, I would just debate the matter if I could. Just have the floor. Thank you very much. I'd, I'd just like, I'd like to speak against this um, this evening. Mr Acting Mayor, um, I think it's a rescission motion personally of convenience. Um, we've just heard from, from an expert there in, in Mrs Dengate um, the rhyme and the reason be behind what was unanimous in here and I think we got the decision right the first time. I don't think we can rescind things just by simply saying let's get a bit more information then. It's our responsibility to get the information back when. And that could have been done. There's nothing new in here that wasn't on the public record. There's nothing that I didn't hear getting discussed here that night, quite frankly. I mean, we've got a rescission motion that seems to be based around the possibility of mildly affecting um, wedding ceremonies. I don't think that should change the fact that, there's, that that could really affect an emergency beacon, sorry, an emergency radio tower, um, and obviously affect those emergency services. 
uh, in the risk of um, a, a bit of tongue in cheek here, it's, it would just appear that possibly this rescission motion has been created to give a bit of um, bit of name ID uh, for a particular side of politics. I think it's a waste of time and a total waste of time. For running, <laughs> thank, thank you, Councillor Mertens. Oh, Councillor Marquette, stick to the debate. Thank you, Councillor Mertens. No, 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 no. I'm asking you to continue. Okay, but I'll just hopefully get a bit of order in here because one side doesn't seem to get to speak. I called Councillor Mertens. Yes, thank now you. asking yeah. you to continue on the okay. debate now that Councillor Mertens is quiet. I'd like to continue. I'd very much thank like you. to continue. I'd like to continue by saying along the same line as I was saying, this rescission motion, there's obviously three Labor names on there, has nothing to do with the mast <laughs> and everything to do with name ID in the Terrigal region. So I would hope that everyone in here will again see through this and vote it down and so we can get on with some business and actually help the people of the Central Coast. Thank you, Councillor Mark Quaid. Councillor Burke, you have the floor. Through you, uh, Mr Deputy Mayor. Um, I've got a question of the officers first. Um, how many weddings uh, are performed at that particular site up there on the school unit, where, which is uh, site one? I'll be interested years. if the uh, director actually knows that you, you're the wedding counter. Man, I'll, I'd have to take that on notice. Take that on notice. Thank take you, Councillor Burke. We All can't right, answer uh, that. Uh, I'll just uh, continue Next question. on with the debate. Yeah, it's not a question. It's I'll, debate. I'll, I'll Thank debate. you, Councillor Burke. Yeah, I'll, t I'll tell you, um, there might be... I, I, on authority, there's about four weddings a year. Um, <laughs> there's also, within 500 um, metres, uh, there's Terrigal Beach. There's a surf club where you can have a wedding. Uh, there's a Skillion Beach, which is just down below uh, the Skillion there. Uh, there's a Trojans Club, there's a Crown Plaza, uh, so there's plenty of places to, uh, to have a wedding. Uh, so I don't think it's a real uh, point that was brought up. Um, the, uh, the first one, the first point that was brought up was uh, no line of sight. Well, I'll tell you now, there is a line of sight and there's two boys and that's from up the top of the Skillion, the best place to view it from. Uh, point two was... Um, was uh, the steep incline. There's a beautiful, which the council has done, uh, there's a beautiful uh, walkway all around that takes you up to the top of the to, uh, to where that particular point is. Uh, point three was back in uh, 2014, council had already passed the motion deciding on site two. Well, I was at that, uh, um, that meeting and I think I seconded, so uh, Councillor Suntram uh, mentioned that to me. Um, we did debate quite a few sites there. Um, the top of the Skillion, um, but we, we gave that a miss because different people could climb up the mask and it could be devastating. Halfway down the Skillion, to the left of the Skillion, the right of the Skillion. Um, we wanted the mast to go somewhere, so we put that on the right. And we said that at a later time, and this looks like the time now, that we'll have to decide on a site. The main thing on that particular day, on that night, was the cost and who was going to pay for it. That was our, and that couldn't be resolved at the time. Um, I was lucky enough to be, um, when, the, when the Adelaide went down, I was there. Um, I was, uh, it stopped for about two hours because there was dolphins swimming around. Uh, I got to talk, talk to uh, the guys from the Adelaide um, and they told us, how much of a home it was for the last 20 years. It was very emotional um, and they were there. When it went down, I was standing with them and there was tears rolling down their eyes and there was quite a few guys there. So the RSL, they're for it, the crew are for it at the Adelaide and the general public are for it. So, you know, I can't see anything uh, against it really. Now, I'll just sort of, sort of, if you want to have a look and it's going up on the on the sort of the uh, uh, going on the high side of uh, just on the on the left there. The highest point is, is there. Now, if you go to the Statue of Liberty in America, that's the highest point, and you look at that all the time. If you go to any go to any church, you'll, and you want to find a church, you know where you go. You go to the highest point because the religious people they always always um, go to the highest point. So that's where it should be. It should be a tribute to the people that were were there. Um, I've finished their vote. Um, well, your time has expired, Councillor Berg. Right. you want to wrap it up or do you want I, No, extension? just quickly. That, that's it. I Very think quickly, I've, I've said my piece. Thank and, you. And uh, I, I believe that we should be going for site one. Thank you. Okay. Councillors, I do, I do know, Councillors, that we've had two speakers for and against. If you're happy to continue with debate. 
Councillor Best is moving the motion be put. Do I have a second to that? Councillor Gail Collins. The motion is that the motion be put. Those in favour? One, two, three, four, five, six. Everybody wants it put, including me. So the motion is effectively put. I'll put back to Councillor Sunstrom to close the debate. Councillor Sunstrom. Uh, thank you, councillors, and thank you, Mr. Acting Mayor. Uh, thank you to the speakers tonight. Um, it's not an easy task to get up here and, and speak uh, unless you're well accustomed to it. And I, I thank those people for coming in tonight and doing so. Um, <clears throat> I also thank all the people that added extra information to the picture of what should happen at that location. I know that, uh, that uh, I've formed an opinion that we didn't get the full picture um, during the briefings and that we didn't have all the information required to make uh, a decision when we allowed this initial motion of um, May to go through uh, by the exception method. I think it would have been better if it had been debated on the floor. <clears throat> Having said that, um, this motion does not intend any disrespect to any servicemen. Um, it underst I understand I understand the value of communications to an emergency service and I'm just hoping that this motion will get through so that we can get the full picture and come to a decision based on all the facts. Thank you very much. Thank you, the councillors, we're actually voting on the rescission motion, as I pointed out before. So we have the rescission motion for the matter with councillors uh, Sunstrom and McGregor. Those in favour of the rescission, show of hands, please. Councillor Mertens, Councillor Sunstrom, Councillor Matthews, Councillor McGregor, Councillor Vincent and Councillor Hogan. Those against the rescission? Councillor Marquette, Co Collins, Pillen, McLaughlin, Burke, Best and Holstein. Councillor Greenaway? Yes. Abstain. You're abstaining. It's lost. Yes. Okay, one, two, one, two three, four, five, six, yeah. seven, eight. Okay, so the call is eight. Yeah, okay. Eight six, the rescission is lost. Thank you, councillors. Allow the mayor to come back into the chamber. Uh, thank you, Councillor Holstein. Um, uh, councillors, we're up to item 1.2, confirmation of minutes of the previous meeting. So um, this is the meeting that was uh, commenced on Monday the 28th of May and then reconvened on Monday the 4th of June. Um, do I have a mover that those minutes be adopted? Move Councillor Matthews, seconded Councillor Gail Collins. Um, all in favour? Any opposed? That's carried. Uh, Councillors, procedural motion. I don't think we need to vote, but no, I'm just skipping over it. Um, councillors, procedural motion. So we'll now consider those items that are to be passed by exception method. Um, so I'll call out the number and title of each item. If you could indicate uh, whether you wish that to be considered. This one is. This one's yeah. back in. Um, so item 2.1, planning proposal, Summersby Business Park. No? Item 3.1, acquisition of land at the Summersby Industrial Park for road widening. Councillor Mertens. 
Item 3.2, acquisition of land at Tugra for road widening. No? Are you right, Councillor Pillan? Um, item 4.1, deferred item notice for motion, sister city trip to Japan. Yes. Councillor McGregor, I think, put his hand up first, and Councillor Best. I'm, I'm on the mover, I, I call it. Thank you. Councillor 4. Point, uh, item 4.3, water and sewerage 2015, Councillor Gail Collins. Item 4.4, uh, meeting records of the Protection of Environment Trust and Gosford Foundation Trust. Item 4.5, setting of fees to be... Um, yes, so that's called up, Councillor Greenaway. Um, setting of fees to be paid to the Mayor, Deputy Mayor and Councillors. I think that needs to be... No, that can go through. Nobody's stirring that. Item 4.6, election to fill casual vacancy on the board of the Local Government and Shires Association. Councillor McGregor. Item 4.7, 2017-18 Community Support Grant Program. No? Item 4.8, 2017-18 Community Partnership and Community Development Grant Program. No? Sorry, Councillor Pillan? You're calling that up? Item 5.1, Grant Funding Update. No. Item 5.2, TAFE New South Wales Outreach Program. No. Item 5.3, Workers' Compensation Self-Insurers Renewal. No. Uh, thank you, Councillor McGregor. Item 7.1, Gwandalin Playground. I'll star that. Item 7.2, Notice of Motion Homeless Concerns. Councillor Holstein. And I think that's all the items that have been called up. Um, with that in mind, councillors, I would um, move that those items not starred for discussion or debate, um, that council adopt the recommendations in those reports. So those being items, um, item 2.1, planning proposal, item 3.2, acquisition of land at Tugra, Item 4.5, setting of fees. Item 4.7, 2017-18 Community Support Grant Program. Item 5.1, Grant Funding Update. And Item 5.2, TAFE New South Wales Outreach Program. Move, Councillor Gail Collins. Is there a seconder? Councillor Burke, all in favour? Any opposed? That's carried. Um, so, councillors, we'll proceed to work our way through those matters that have been identified. First item is item 3.1, acquisition of land at the Summersby Industrial Park for road widening. Councillor Mertens, did you have a motion? You're moving the recommendation on the board. Do I have a seconder? Uh, Councillor Vincent, Councillor Mertens, would you like to speak to that? Uh, only to ask uh, some questions, <coughs> Madam Mayor. I don't have a uh, problem or concerns or anything further on the actual substance of the motion. Um, I note that in the report, through you, Madam Mayor, questions you're probably um, acting Director Bolgoff. Um, in the report um, provided by staff and in the business paper, uh, it makes mention of the service contribution agreement um, related to the Summersby Industrial Park. A um, number of people have spoken to me about um, the, the kind of the actual effect that that contribution. Um, and the, you know, the quantum of that has on people's ability to sell the land or to develop the land. Um, just want to ask, is, are there any plans at the moment um, for council or the state government to review that level of contribution? Mr. Bolgoff. Um, yes, through, through you, Madam Mayor. There has been uh, uh, quite an extensive review in relation to the rates in that particular area that has been going through legal at the moment, and I can't really say too much more okay. than, than that at this point. So it, it, it something is in the pipeline, yes. is that? Okay. Just through you, Madam Mayor. And what is, I guess, Council's view of of that area? Is it is it due for greater growth, or do we expand, or do we work within the existing parcel, or is there a view that Council staff have on that matter? Mr. Belka. So through you, Madam Mayor. I think there's only about nine properties remaining that haven't been 
um, impacted by the um, the service contribution, mm -hmm. the zoning would be a matter of council okay. at this point. You know, I'm not proposing there be something from um, uh, environment planning. Thank you. That's all my questions. Thank you, um, Councillor Mertens. Can I just follow up with some clarification? And I'm not sure if it's related to your question, but just a, a more general question about that area. I know that the former Gosford Council did a lot of work on the plan of management up there, taking into account the Aboriginal significance and the environmental significance of that area. Um, we're still working to that plan of management, aren't we? Could I just clarify, Mr. Bolgoff? Oh, three, Madam Mayor. It's oh, three, sorry. It's probably, it's probably Thank you. Me. Three, Madam Mayor. Yes, um, all the development assess all development applications are um, considered against that plan of management. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, any further discussion or debate? Uh, Councillor Pillan. Question. Sorry, um, it's come from the community. Uh, what it's just got. What exactly is the four-year project that requires expenditure of twelve million on what appears to be fractured acquisitions? Please, Mr. Bolgoff. Uh, who's taking that, Mr. Bolgoff? Yeah. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor. The acquisition is only a very small portion of the funding um, for that precinct. The entire project is around the twenty-four million dollars and it's mainly to do with road widening, drainage works in that precinct to allow for the level of, of um, intensity that it was intended for for that particular area. Thank you. Um, councillors, I don't seem to have any further discussion or debate, so I'll put the motion moved by Councillor Merton, seconded by Councillor Vincent. All in favour? Any opposed? That's carried. Next item is item uh, 4.1, the um, sister city, sorry, the notice of motion, council sister city trip to Japan. Councillor Best, did you have a motion that you were moving? I'll, I'll move it. But it. I'll move it, but it needs to, Jade, be brought into the first tense in time, and that is the two would have to change, if I can borrow Jade for a second, two would have to change, Madam Mayor, and that would be the two that council notes that selected councillors at attended. On three, you would take out will and just go um, leadership vacuum existed locally. And if there's any other first uh, time tenses, I'm happy to change them. I can't see any others. I think NITA is not spelt right for some reason. I'm not big on that one, but I some reason I've got a feeling it's not right, but anyway, it won't change the world. Uh, so, Councillor Best, you're moving that? As, as is, yes. Uh, do yes. I have a seconder? Uh, Councillor Marquette. Councillor Best, did you want to speak to that? Yes, Madam Mayor. Look, uh, this, this whole matter uh, occurred in the very formative period of this council, and we didn't really understand the potential that there are other likely sister city relationships that have been fostered over the years between the two former councils. Now, I'm asking for a report on the status of that, and I'm assuming that they may likely be dormant, but that's not necessarily that they will stay dormant as did Udugawa. Um, so again, what will we do if they ask us? Will we, will we send more councillors? What will our policy be? We've begun to set a precedent here. That concerns me. Also, to the newer councillors of the room, it will not be lost on you in the future that when some of our sister city friends arrive, they arrive in mass. They arrive with very large delegations, particularly the Asian delegations, China and Japan. Again, there is substantial costs in that and they're not being considered in any of this. So I only flag the seeking of a report on this. Um, the public are watching very carefully. I think if I did a straw poll in this room and asked hands up those who think that councillors should attend overseas conferences or city relationships at the expense of the ratepayer, I don't think I'd get too many takers. And that's just, you can do your own straw poll in your own ward, in your own cabbage patch, at your own shopping centre. The reality is, is the ratepayers don't like councils going overseas on ratepayer funds. It's just that simple. So as with Gosford Council and Wyong, and I'm happy to stand corrected and I may make a standing question at the end of my address 
to possibly, you know, Councillor Burke, but I believe we, uh, as did our sister Gosford, all councillors paid their own way on overseas trips. And I, and I think that's rightfully so, it should be that way. Conferences and education activities, as Councillor Merton said earlier, there's uh, quite a substantial allocation for education and continuing professional development. I don't think anyone would begrudge a, a fledgling council like this receiving that kind of support out of the budget. But when it comes to heading overseas, and some will call them junkets, some will call them holidays, call them what you like, but we spent $25,000 of ratepayer money going overseas to sign a document. That's the sum total of it. And I know there might have been a good cultural exchange, and I'm not going to get into the cultural exchange debate because there's quite merit in that. Can't argue, never have. In fact, I support it. The problem I have is that we are spending ratepayer money that should be allocated to the basics of roads, roads and rubbish on going overseas, on conferences, on sister city relationships that the ratepayers are paying for. The new council of the day is a February decision. I think on reflection, you all have a chance now to consider that we could ultimately end up with four sister cities here on paper in front of us, plus the reciprocation that we may have to give when they attend this council. It's a matter for yourselves, councillors. And my question stands to Councillor Burke through you, Madam Mayor. Um, before you um, answer that question, I will just clarify, Councillor Best, I, I would expect that the expenditure will be um, less than the 25000 so I don't believe Council has spent that amount. I think that's what Councillor resolved to allow, um, but I think when a report comes back to Council, it will show that that I was not... I wasn't there, so I, I respect your, um, your view on that. Um, Councillor Burke, I believe Councillor Best just asked you a question. Yes, uh, for the question and for clarity, um, I want to put on the record uh, that uh, I went to Edigawa. Uh, my wife accompanied me. Uh, the mayor of the day, Laurie Ma, was there. The general manager was Peter Wilson. Uh, a Labor, Jim McFadden, was there, and a Liberal, uh, Jeff Strickson, and his wife were there. And we all paid our own ways. Thank you, uh, Councillor Burke. You. Um, Councillor, sorry, who seconded this? Uh, Councillor Marquette, did you want to speak as seconder of the motion? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I, I obviously would like to second this motion, yes. I mean, I think what this is going to give us is hopefully some clarity. Um, I've got absolutely nothing against um, any sort of sister city program. I, I don't even necessarily have anything against a particular spend being on that, as long as it's pretty clear from the start and, um, and the ratepayers of the Central Coast know what they're dealing with. And, and everyone in the chamber here knows what they're dealing with. So there is obviously, um, there is a fair few arrangements there in regards to other sister cities. There is the possibility of, of other sister cities wanting to come and obviously visit our region. I think we should have a report around it so we can have some, some pretty strict guidelines um, because I don't think we want to look like, we'd, I think the word junk had got used before. That's the last thing that we want um, the people of the Central Coast to think that we're participating in. Um, obviously it does sound like previous, the two previous councils did stand up and um, councillors paid their own way. I'm not saying that's even the way we should go. What I'm saying is let's get a report, let's all make a decision, um, let's all stand in here and say which way we do want to go so it's in black and white and everyone knows exactly where we stand. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Marquette. Um, Councillor McGregor. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I have an amendment to the motion which has already been sent through to the council support team. Um, the amendment reads to delete items 2 through 5 and item 7 resulting in item 6 becoming item 2, inserting an additional item 3 with the following wording. That council provide a report and briefing to councillors as a matter of urgency outlining what sister city relationships are currently in place for Central Coast Council and what opportunities or plans exist for strengthening our relationship with Etagawa and extending our relationship to include other sister cities including but not limited to the former sister cities of Gosford City or Wyong Shire. Uh, thank you, Councillor McGregor. We might just give people just a chance to um, read that. Is there only the three parts no, now? Yeah. Yep. Um, so I'll just give everybody a chance to have a look. All right, um, Councillor McGregor, so you're moving that as an amendment. Do we have a seconder for that amendment? Councillor Matthews. Uh, Councillor McGregor, did you want to speak to the amendment? I'll just speak very briefly to the amendment. The amendment seeks to do the same as the initial one, 
without some of the imputations that are involved, without some of the theatrics and without some of the irrelevancies. So we're really here now trying to put this amendment up just to get a report, see where we sit. Um, I've already had contact from NITRA previously, from someone claiming to represent them, um, and I'm aware that there was other ones, which is why that section, that first and second section is included in the motion. But it's just about narrowing down, drilling down on what is our relationship? Do we want to resume? Are there other places which potentially we could have some benefit from? Uh, that's really all the amendments doing. It's just taking away some of the theatrics uh, from the original motion. And I just put on the record as well in supporting the amendment and supporting the sister city uh, relationships. I believe it's something that we do gain a lot from. Um, all you've got to do is look around at some of the artwork in this building. Go over to when we did our first um, bus trip around and we went to the gardens. You see things like that. So there are clear tangible benefits for ratepayers. There are things that we can see bring huge benefit. And I think it's important that we do commit to these sister city relationships, um, but also that it's not just a one-way street because clearly we're receiving a lot from it. It's not just a junket or people traveling overseas. It's actually about a genuine uh, exchange on the cultural, the social and the economic level. So it's about maintaining the relationship with Etagawa and seeking, um, seeking new relationships and maintaining our commitment to internationalism. You know, we can't be too backward and insular on the central coast. We've got to look at the best practices around the world and we've got to look at how we can engage to be a leading global city, particularly for Gosford, as we're trying to develop it and see it blossom into something new to see that Gosford reach the full potential. So it's important that our region, with the, um, particularly with the economic clout that we do have now being included, is engaging with the rest of the world. We're seeing how they do things and we're seeing how we can learn from one another. So I encourage people to support the amendment. Thank you, Councillor McGregor. Councillor Matthews, did you want to speak as seconder? No. Um, so, councillors, we are dealing with the amendment now. Councillor Gail Collins, I have you listed. Did you want to speak on the amendment or the motion? Okay, so we'll hold that. Uh, Councillor Holstein, speaking on the amendment? I will speak on the amendment. Just on the basis that, you know, if they uh, have two for and two against, I might miss the opportunity, and I don't want to miss the opportunity on this one. Um, I'm a little uh, concerned about uh, the initial motion and uh, why I'll be supporting the amendment. Uh, I thought it was wishful thinking that there'd be a leadership vacuum. Um, a motive? Sure sounds that way. Um, the dormant sister city debate that came up, that's just scaremongering. The only thing this council has was an agreement to actually the Etagawa. I believe everything else is uh, not being continued, and that was the only one. And why was that continued? Because of a 30-year history that had been with the previous Gosford City Councillor and that of Etagawa. A 30-year history that had been exceedingly benefit to the people and residents of this city. It had been exceptional in what it had done. And to even mention the word junket is disrespectful, in my mind, to what has been a great relationship. I'm one of the longest serving councillors on the Central Coast here at nearly 25 years. In that term, as the longest serving mayor of the Central of the Gosford City Council, three trips were taken to Etagawa. One I've just concluded as Deputy Mayor of the Central Coast Council, <laughs> and one of the three was actually when we went over in respect, flew in one day, flew out the next for the commemorative service for Mayor Nakazato, who was responsible in the days of Pat Harrison for this contribution from the city of Etagawa to the Caroline Bay Arts Centre gardens out there. The cost, the benefits, and I notice some councillors don't want to talk about the cultural exchange because they agree, but I'll remind the councillors there are thousands of young people in this city who have been in exchange programs that have gone to Etagawa at no cost to this council, and in fact no cost to Etagawa because they are with homestays who we met while we were over there, and that will continue. The ability for those young people here not only in their education, but also in their, um, uh, their, their cultural endeavours, uh, their music, their dance. There have been girl guides. There have been scouts. There's been connections with Rotaries and Lions Clubs that have gone over and got benefit from the sister city. That's from our side. Just as many young people have come from Etagao with the Etagao Youth Wing. It is a great program. It's not one that's been abused in the time that I was in Gosford City Council in no way, shape or form. But it did provide benefit. It provided benefit to the, to the, to the city and to our students here. Nobody would seek to do anything other. I support the amendment because, yes, have a look at it. I don't know whether it needs to look at others. 
I know there are some probably from the former Wyong Council that think a sister city relationship may be an overseas developer doing a housing development that will put it under the guise of a theme park. That's not it. Never has been, never will be. The sister city agreement was a cultural exchange and had been used to its maximum benefit for the city. Councillor Holstein, do you need a further minute? I'll leave it at that, thank you, Madam Mayor, other than to say to the councillors, I think there's common sense in the amendment and I think the amendment should be supported. Thank you, Councillor Holstein. Um, Councillor Vincent, are you speaking on the amendment? Um, thanks, Madam Mayor. Um, I rise to support the amendment, and but first of all, can I say I'm disappointed, and I'm disappointed in two ways. Um, one, that we didn't get to hear Mr Taylor speak tonight. I, I really think that would have been very interesting. Um, I, I, I know that he's been stuck in traffic, Mr Best said, and that's happened on a couple of meetings, and I mean, I, I, if I had a know on that, I would have texted Mr Taylor and said, just look at Google Maps and you know, see what the time delay is getting between the, wherever we're going. But anyhow, we've missed that opportunity. But um, the second thing, I'm, so I'm disappointed on Councillor Best, how he seems to flip-flop all the time, because I remember in previous councils, uh, we had debates about sending delegations to China. We even had debates on buying Merrill chains to go to China and having business cards and memorandums of understanding. And oh, I'm, I'm, that did come to more than what this cultural exchange has taken, like for a historical you know, Gosford City um, uh, trip to, um, to Adelaide. So, I mean, I remember Councillor Best was the chairman of the Economic and Employment Committee and uh, he had recommendations about going to China and having business cards and... Um, Councillor Vincent, you're just straying a little bit outside the width are. of the motion, so, so if you could I'm, just I'm, focus I'm, on I'm the I'm just motion, disappointed that some people, the, the calibre of the debate that they bring in the chamber and how short a time frame it takes for a view just to completely change. And, you almost think it's, it's situational to maybe the politics of it, but I, I wouldn't want to say that or infer that, so I'll, I'll stay away from that. But this was a good cultural exchange. I'm sure that we created excellent ties and mm. the delegates that we sent would have held the Gosford area and the Wyong area and the Central Coast as a whole in high esteem. And if we can create those cultural exchanges and continue them at a reasonable rate, I think that's worth doing. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Vincent. Um, Councillor Gail Collins speaking to the amendment. Um, Madam Mayor, councillors and executive leaders, I rise to oppose the amendment. Uh, <clears throat> I'm standing up for residents that have approached me and what they've said to me is they don't want any further ratepayers' money spent on overseas trips. I understand what Councillor Berker said in previous councils, uh, councillors could pay for their own trip. I do support uh, the cultural relationship sister cities. I do think we need a report that goes into the budget costings for any planned overseas sister city trips and any future hosting delegations planned on the Central Coast. Um, <clears throat> and like I said, until recently, I was unaware that we had four previous sister city relationships, two in China, one in Japan, and one in Slovakia. So I look forward to seeing yeah, a report. Um, thank you, Councillor Gail Collins. Um, Councillor Best, are you yes. speaking on the amendment? Um, Madam Mayor, I find it fascinating, and I said from the get-go in the original motion that this has got nothing to do with um, the sister city debate, yet Councillor Holstein went on about a whole range of issues, and the Gary is clapping in support of sister cities. Well, I don't think anybody in this room is against sister cities. I think everyone sees the cultural benefit and the interface and the exchange is quite a, a beneficial thing at every level, you know, from students right the way through to seniors. It is a very good international initiative. However, I come back, I just come back to the only point that matters in this room, and that is that the councillors of the former council, regardless of what some people want to dream up of the past, paid their own way. That's it. That's the fundamental difference. There is no difference in this room about sister cities and the cultural exchange and all the speeches that have gone on, and no, one, no <laughs> one's yeah, raised chance. junkets. I did say, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I did say that some believe these are seen to be junkets. Look, Council, you've, you've just gone through to the debate on the dredge and the meeting here, and you saw what the public thought of us. Here's your chance to change it, and to not only look good, but to genuinely do what you've come to do, and that's represent your community without fear or favour and not waste their money. Now, some I hear in this chamber have made some comments. It's, it's only 25,000 or 20,000 or 15 or whatever it's going to turn out to be 
You know, it's only 200,000 to give to a community group to go out and fight a legal group a battle in the courts. It's just 200,000. That's a lot of money. And at the end of the day, we've got a $64,000 surplus in a $750 million budget. It isn't going to end well. We're going to overrun as much as you, you think it is, and we're going to overrun to blazes, and it's going to hurt us. We're going to have to make some serious decisions. This kind of fiscal responsibility needs to be not only done, needs to be shown to the community. Hands up anybody out there in podcast land that thinks any one of we 15 councillors should go overseas at your expense. Just one of you, please put your hand up. And I suggest there's not one. And you know there's not one. Stop interrupting. There's not one person that thinks we should go overseas. We're not, we're not Julie Bishop going to the UN. We're not those uh, people. Vincent. That's the federal government. We're roads, rates and rubbish. Do you know how uh, hard it is for some people... Councillor Best. Do you know how hard it is for some people to scrape together their rate money? People in some of the areas I represent, they are genuinely doing it tough and we think it's OK to pile up 25 grand and go on an overseas trip that they may think it's a holiday, uh, Councillor but Best, not. just a point of order once again. I've already indicated to you that although Council Clock's approved 25000 I know, I said that before. Yeah, 15, so 20. if we could just get it so accurate, amend- that would be oh. great, Councillor Best. So the amendment's saying not do it at your expense. It's saying let's go and have more sisters to relationships at the current policy of expense. We could be in Hawaii, New York, Paris. Who knows where we're going to go next? That's ridiculous as an amendment. Get your report, get your information and make an informed decision. Thank you, Councillor Best. Thank you. Um, Councillors, um, before I hand back to... Uh, Councillor Greenaway, are you speaking on the amendment? Yes or no? OK, we'll move on, Councillor Greenaway. Um, Councillor... Just Mr. Uh, Councillor Greenaway, I need to put that um, motion from Councillor Best. So Councillor Best has moved that the motion be put. Um, All in favour, please raise your hand. Uh, The amendment, the amendment. Uh, One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Those opposed? One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Um, so that motion is successful. Um, so, Councillor McGregor, did you want to close debate on the amendment before we put the motion? I'll just be very brief. I think we all know where we stand on this. We're trying to progress things tonight. We're trying to move forward, get a report, have some cogency in the room and have some measured decision making. So. I, uh, I support the amendment, obviously, and I encourage my colleagues to do the same. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McGregor. I'll put the amendment moved by Councillor McGregor, seconded by Councillor Matthews. All in favour, please raise your hand. Councillor Holstein, Merton, Sundstrom, Matthews, McGregor, Greenaway, Vincent, Hogan and Smith. Those opposed? Councillor Marquette, Gail Collins, Pillen, McLaughlin, Burke and Best. The amendment now. is carried. Um, you want a division on the amendment or the motion? On, on what we just, oh, you got the motion up, sorry? Uh, well, this now becomes no, the motion, so why don't we do that first and then we can have your division. Um, so the amendment becomes the motion, so all in favour of the motion, please raise your hand. Councillor Holstein, Merton, Sundstrom, Matthews, McGregor, Greenaway, Vincent, Hogan and Smith, those opposed? Councillor Marquette, Gail Collins, Pillen, McLaughlin, Burke and Best. Um, Councillor Best, I need a couple of councillors on their feet if you want a division. Okay, so division. Um, So you can take your seat. All in favour of the motion, please stand. Councillor Holstein, Merton, Sundstrom, Matthews, McGregor, Greenaway, Vincent Hogan and Smith. Those opposed, please stand. Councillor Marquette, Gail Collins, Pillen, McLaughlin, Burke and Bess. Uh, The motion is carried. Thank you, councillors. Councillors, the next item is um, item 4.3, water and sewage, uh, 2015-16 performance results. Um, Do I have a motion? Uh, Councillor Gail Collins, what's your motion? Okay, thank you. Is there a seconder? 
Councillor Holstein. Councillor Gail Collins, did you want to speak to that? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, Council councillors and executive leaders. Thank you, uh, Boris Bolgoff, uh, Acting Director of Assets Infrastructure and Business and the team in Asset Infrastructure Department for the hard work that goes in behind the scenes. The New South Wales Supply and Sewage Performance Monitoring Report compares the, the performance of all 92 New South Wales local government water utilities, <clears throat> excluding Sydney and Hunter Water Corporations in the Hawkesbury Council. 2015 to 2016 performance results reveals a mammoth task ahead for Central Coast Council, and I believe that we're up to the task. Central Coast Council has rated uh, lowest ranking with regards to the water quality satisfaction, the unplanned water interruptions, water main breaks and overflows to the environment. Thank you to the residents of Bensville, Empire Bay and the Peninsula that reached out and voiced their concerns, <clears throat> including Heather and Michael, Tim, Michelle, Christine, Georgia, Imby, Kerry, Joanne, Amy, Emma and Victoria, just to name a few. Council now has $36.65 million budget in our Capital Works program for 2018-2019 to upgrade our infrastructure and to find the right solutions for our Central Coast residents so that we all Councilor have Vincent. access to good quality water. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Councillor Gail Collins. Um, Councillor Holstein, are you speaking to this? Um, do I have any speakers against the motion? I have some questions staff. Uh, Councillor Best, what's your question? Um, I might give this to the General Manager if I may. Um, Thank you for the report, um, and I do recognise, as Councillor Gail Collins has outlined, we have a substantial contribution in the infrastructure um, budget. However, Mr General Manager, <clears throat> I note that we have an IPAR determination um, being prepared to go in shortly. Do you believe that the infrastructure backlog and the issues around our infrastructure in the water area are going to be met by the current budgetary capacity, or do you feel that we are going to inevitably have to seek further funds from the ratepayers? Through you, um, Madam Mayor, Councillor Best, ultimately that decision is going to be made by IPART. The submission that we will put to IPART will be seeking to address that backlog. Um, we are limited to the amount that we can charge for our water and sewer services by what IPART determines. So that is ultimately going to be for IPART to determine, not us. Could I further ask, would our submission likely request IPAR for further funds to be determined by them for us to carry out the works you envisage? Three, Madam Mayor, Councillor Best, the submission to IPART will take into account the backlog of infrastructure maintenance and, and um, replacement. That's what all of the submissions to IPART have traditionally done. Um, it will be a argued in that IPART submission that we need to program those works moving forward. Whether that results in a net increase in the fees that IPART allows is a matter for IPART to determine. Well, could I try it one more time? Would we likely make a recommendation to seek further funds, less funds, or no increase at all, or decrease? Um, through you, um, Madam Mayor, ultimately the IPART submission will come back to this council for its ratification. It will be to <coughs> seek sufficient funds to meet the backlog so that we can improve or maintain the levels of service in the water and sewer business. I can't tell you whether it's an increase or decrease because the work hasn't been completed to do and, that yet. And finally, if I can ask um, through you, Madam Mayor, any submission to IPAR will come through the Chamber before it finds its way to IPAR? Yes. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Best. Um, Councillors, did we have any speakers against the motion? Um, all right, I'll entertain some questions for a while, but if there's no speakers against, then I'd like to put the motion fairly soon. So, oh, Councillor Mertens. Thank you for entertaining me, Madam Mayor. Um, <coughs> in You're relation... very entertaining, <laughs> Councillor Mertens. <laughs> we try and entertain each other. Um, question through you, Madam Mayor, to um, Action Director Bolgoff. Um, I note it's a very interesting report and it's come at a very providential time, I think, compared to what we discussed last meeting. Um, I note that the combined operating cost for water and sewerage um, dollars per property for the Central Coast Council is $497 um, compared to the state median of $910 and $914 for the national median. Um, why is ours half that cost? Mr Bolgoff. 
So through you, Madam Mayor, that's what's been identified as operational cost. I don't believe it includes all the capital in, in that figure. So it, including capital, it could be upwards of the closer to the $900 mark, is that correct? I believe so. I do believe so. Are you done, Councillor Mertens? That's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Foiled me again, Mr Bogoff. You were entertaining. I was. Yes, that was Thank entertaining. Uh, Councillor Holstein, did you have a question? Or are you speaking against the motion? No, I think so. All right. Um, Councillor McGregor, are you speaking against the motion? Well, I would hope not to and just limit to questions. If I have to. Um, yes. Okay. What's your question? Thank you. Um, I note that it says that there's 38 main breaks, 32 overflows to the environment and 3.1 are uh, reported to the regulator. Do we have a breakdown of where these were? And if so, is that... Uh, able to be made available to councillors? Um, through you, Madam Mayor, we do have the data and uh, that can be provided separately to the council report. Okay, I'd, I'd request that. And just um, like one last question. Does it appear that these are concentrated in one particular area or multiple areas and how are we addressing that if it is so? Through you, Madam Mayor, I haven't got the, the details of that for tonight. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you. Councillors, we don't have any speakers again, so I'll put the motion moved by Councillor Gail Collins, seconded by Councillor Holstein. All in favour? Any opposed? Carried. Councillors, next item is item 4.4, the meeting records of the Protection of the Environment Trust and Gosford Foundation Trust. I'd actually like to move that this item be deferred um, to a future meeting, seconded by Councillor Best. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, you did start, but doesn't necessarily you mean you get first call. It just means that you start that you would like to discuss or debate it. So, did you have a question or did you want to discuss it, Councillor Greenaway? Yeah, I wanted to defer sections of it. Um, well, I'd actually like to defer the whole item, Councillor Greenaway. So, is that? Um, uh, because the reports include um, reference to the um, terms of reference and. Uh, my feeling is that those terms of reference need to be discussed a little bit more by the committees. Um, any further discussion or debate? Can Sorry. Uh, I do have a seconder. It was Councillor Best. Councillor, Best. Um, Councillor Greenaway, did you have some further questions? Um, yes, Madam Mayor. The question um, in... Um, a document that I've been looking at about the trust. It says that the council is trustee of the trust um, and the committee recommends to the trustee, which is the council, about various issues. Um, and I just thought, well, as a member of the council, even though I'm not on the trust, I feel I should know a little bit more about um, what the trust involves. So I was, apart from, uh, um, apart from going to move that the item be deferred, I wanted it deferred until councillors are provided with a copy of the trust deed and related documents, including assets, liabilities and audited accounts, and also independent legal advice as to our position as a trustee and our obligations and potential exposure. Um, so, Councillor Greenaway, some of those um, matters that you've raised are the things that the Trust Committee will be discussing further, um, including some legal advice and some clarification around the wording of the trust deed. Um, so I'm sure that information can be provided to the full council, as it should be, um, but at this stage I'd like to defer the item so that that information can be considered by the Trust Committee. Okay, but that will also include providing us with a copy of the trust deed. Um, I think that's available, and I'm as a trustee, I would like to see the trust deed. Yeah. That I'm a they have been attached of. to previous reports, so I see no reason why they couldn't be attached. Okay, to I don't the recall report reading them coming previously. Forward, um, not to this council, to the former council. Oh, um, um, Councillor Gail Collins, did you have a question or comment? Uh, question. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I'd like to see some fiscal responsibility of the council, and I would I would like for the reports back on any of the committees that we have, including the two that are in specifying at the moment, that if we could specify the costings, the budget costings, that the committee meetings actually, the, the budget around that, the costings for each meeting, if that can be reported for the public to view, 
Um, so, so Councillor Gail Collins, can I just clarify, you want the cost of staff attending the meeting? Yes, please. On all committee meetings so that the general public can view the cost of having these meetings. Thank you. Um, so I'm not going to accept that as part of my motion to defer. I, I'm not opposed to what you're asking. I just think that it's probably a little bit impractical for every minutes of every committee to put a figure on um, the cost of the staff and the admin and the overheads. I think that previously has been included in a report by the staff when these committees were suggested. Um, I, I think as a hypothetical figure, I don't know that it's been drilled down. So could I suggest that um, maybe at some interval you might get a report? I just would query that it's not particularly realistic and a bit of a waste of resources for staff to provide that for every, count, every advisory committee. Are you open to that? Well, question through you, Madam Mayor, to Acting Chief Executive Officer Brian Glendenning. How would you propose that we go about that fiscal responsibility, Mr Glendenning, do you think, so the public can see the cost of holding our committee meetings? Perhaps we do it quarterly, perhaps we do it biannually. I'm, I'm happy to be guided by you on this one. Three, Madam Mayor. Uh, Councillor Gail Collins, it's up to Council how frequently it wants reports on those things. We certainly keep data and can provide those reports as frequently or infrequently as the council requires. At the moment, I think we do it quarterly, but we can certainly do it quarterly or every six months. It's a matter for the council to tell us what it would like. So it's best I bring a motion to the next meeting? That might be uh, the appropriate way to bring the matter thank you. before the council. Um, thank you, councillors. Um, so do I have any speakers against the matter being deferred? Then I'll put the motion moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Best. All in favour, please raise your hand. Any opposed? Motion is carried. Uh, next item is item 4.6, election to fill casual vacancy on the board of the Local Government and Shires Association. Um, Councillor McGregor, did you star this one? Yeah, the one to put people's names down, isn't it? Shouldn't take too long. Um, yes, that's correct. So did you have a motion that you were putting forward? Uh, how many people do we have to put on it? Uh, just scrolling down, I think it's seven in total. So, so we one, need two, five more. Five more. Five more. Okay. <coughs> who, who would like to go on it? I would like to go on it. Uh, Councillor Matthews, Councillor McGregor, are you putting yourself forward? Yeah, I'll put myself forward, Councillor Matthews. Um, could we just have a show of hands and see if we can fill those one, two, three, four, Mr. five Sun spots Councillor without Sunstrom, one, Gail two, Collins. three, four, five. So we have our five. Councillor Sunstrom, Councillor Gail Collins, Councillor Matthews, Councillor McGregor and Councillor Pillen. So you're moving that way, Councillor McGregor? Yep. Do we have a seconder? Seconded by Councillor Best. Any, um, any speakers against? Councillor McGregor, did you feel the need to speak on this? No, I'll reserve my right. Uh, well, I'm going to put the motion unless you do. Um, I'll put the motion moved by Councillor McGregor, seconded by Councillor Matthews. All in favour, please raise your hand. Any opposed? That's carried. Next item, 4.8, 2017-18 Community Partnership and Community Development Grant Programs. Uh, we did have a number of declarations. Um, I don't know that any of them needed to absent themselves. Uh, Councillor McLaughlin. <laughs> to Councillor Best need to excuse himself or is he just convenient? He didn't declare the um, So, councillors, do I have a motion on this item? Councillor Vincent, you're moving as the recommendation? Yes. Yes, seconded by Councillor Matthews. Um, any debate? Councillor Vincent, did you want to open? No. Councillor Matthews? Uh, Councillor Vincent. Um, just thank you to the uh, staff and the committees and that have looked at these and, uh, and um, uh, as I always said, if you can create some of these, these funds and allocations and give them to community groups, uh, you take a dollar and you turn it into four or five, I think the figure's about ten, I think, maybe. Uh, but uh, um, 
Thank you for the, the report. Thank you, Councillor Vincent. Councillor Matthews, did you want to speak as seconder? Uh, yeah, look, I just want to um, commend these programs and um, to the fellow councillors. Um, we received many, many applications on for, count, for support from council, and I believe that everybody that's been allocated money is more than deserving, and as Councillor Vincent said, we'll turn in the $1 per that we gave them, we'll make three. So I certainly commend um, what we have done and what we will achieve over the next six months with these great community organisations. Thank you, Councillor Matthews. Councillor Pillen, did you have a question or you wanted to talk to this? Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, through you to Julie Vaughan. Um, we all know that there's been a lot of concern about the Long Jetty Street Festival. Um, as a councillor of the entrance ward, just in looking at their Facebook page, actually here at the moment, uh, they put a post up this week to say that they are concerned, or sorry, that it will not go ahead as planned. That post has had 564 um, either likes or dislikes, 384 comments, 145 shares. So there's a lot of angst in the community about that still going ahead. Um, can you tell me, in regards to that, uh, the funding, is that, I hear that that's the, the most funding that any community event has received, is that correct? Through you, uh, through you Madam Mayor, um, Councillor Pillen, yes, the um, recommended amount in tonight's report of $20,562.25 is currently the largest proposed allocation for any um, grant funded um, event for this year and to date we've funded 64 um, other events so it's certainly a significant um, contribution and by far the largest so far. Okay, thank you. Um, and is it possible to explain uh, to the community as to why we weren't able to give uh, additional funding on top of that for this particular festival? Um, through you, Madam Mayor, um, Councillor Pillen, I mean, at the end of the day, there's obviously only so much money that goes so far. The proposed allocation, so we need to assess the um, applications within the funding um, dollars that we have available. The application um, and the amount proposed is consistent with what um, the group have received in previous years. So last year it was in the order of $20,000. Um, in addition, this year there are a number of elements within the grant application that are not supported within the um, current guidelines. So there was a $12,000 requested for event management. There was um, $20,250 requested for event personnel um, and there was $18,000 for infrastructure that was not clearly identified. However, in saying that, there are a number of infrastructure elements such as stage um, and other key um, components of the um, festival that were actually approved because of the appropriate documentation. Okay, so they were basically given as much as we were able to provide under that particular grant scheme. Yep. Through okay, you, Madam Mayor, you. correct, and consistent with what they have received in previous years to host the festival. Okay, thank you. Um, personally, I'd like to see um, our festivals looked at and making them more regional. There may be some out there that we're giving small amounts of funding to that it might need to look at creating larger, more regional events. Um, is there any potential strategies or committees that we're looking at in the future to hold to discuss that that we can be a part of? Through you, Madam Mayor, um, a key element of the um, destination management plan is to develop a major event strategy. So staff have been in the process of um, developing that and at the final stages. So at this stage, we anticipate being able to brief the council laws um, towards the end of July. So that is um, the intention of that, in addition to um, the current community events that are done by the community and council, is to focus on major um, and, and you know significant tourist um, event opportunities. So um, that will be coming and it's already underway, the development of that. Perfect, thank you. So, sorry, just one last question. Um, so even though it's on the Facebook page that they can't move ahead um, as, originally planned, do we have any notification that they are not wanting the money that, we've that we're going to provide if we vote for this tonight? 
Through you, Madam Mayor, um, to date, councils received no correspondence that um, Long Jetty Street Festival are seeking to withdraw their application um, from the current round of funding. So staff did meet with um, the organisers uh, approximately three weeks ago to discuss the fact that their grant request of $70,000 wasn't able to be realised and in fact that what was being proposed is a $20,252. Um, and it's my understanding that at that meeting there was um, confirmation that the committee still wanted us to proceed and submit the re recommendation to council laws. But yes, at this stage, they've not withdrawn their application. Okay, thank you, great. So it's in support of Long Duty Street Festival. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you, Councillor Pillen. Um, Councillor Matthews, yes, Councillor Matthews. Just through the mayor to council, uh, sorry, council, I'll promote you or demote you. Um, uh, Julie, um, given that um, it is all over Facebook that they've cancelled the, um, the festival for this year, um, I wouldn't like to see that money, the 20,000 that we have allocated, um, not be reallocated to possible other programs because we know that we had to um, lessen some other of the um, recipients or some of the people that we said couldn't get money because we didn't have any more money left. So I would like to propose or, or somewhere there that staff make contact with them as a matter of urgency to clarify or seek clarification whether they are going to withdraw or not so that we can, if they are a declining or withdrawing, that we can then look at reallocating that money that we did allocate to them to other community groups that could use it in this quarter. So I don't know what we need for words, but... So, Councillor Matthews, I think your words were pretty good. If we just put a part three that staff, um, as a matter of urgency, seek clarification yeah. about um, the Long Jetty Street Festival and if, um, if they intend to withdraw their application that the panel consider the reallocation of those funds. Ms Vaughan, would that be satisfactory? Certainly, we, we report back at the um, last meeting in June. Yeah. Um, Councillor you. Vincent, do you accept that um, amendment? The funds have to be reallocated in the, in, what's the time plan? Can it be rolled into the next? No, it's uh, three, Madam Mayor. This That's funding is allocated for the 2017-18. Is that what funding year we're in? Um, period. So, um, as Councillor Matthews says, there's um, a number of other grant applica applications that um, that money could be um, utilised for. So that's what we use by the end of financial year. Or allocated, not allocated. Correct, used. allocated. That's yeah. right, not spent, yeah. but allocated. Yes. Um, so, Councillor Vincent, you're okay with that wording? Um, Councillor Matthews, you're yep. happy with that? Um, uh, councillors, Councillor Hogan, I've got you listed to speak on this. Yeah, I just got a question, Madam Mayor. Is that okay? Yes. Um, through you, Madam Mayor, to Julie Vaughan. Uh, my understanding with all the grants is that Council has never um, funded event management or staff or employees in the past and and will not do in the future. Is that right? I don't don't recall any other events that were funded for that purpose. Through you, Madam Mayor, that's correct, Councillor Hogan. It's not normal practice to fund wages and we've not normally funded event management um, fees. Um, as part of the new um, grants and sponsorship program that was developed last year, um, there was also a requirement to review that um, after a 12-month period. So we've commenced and started to undertake that review. And similarly, we'll be coming back to Council with some proposed changes. Um, obviously, this is one item that we can look at as part of that process, but currently and historically, that wasn't part of the former um, guidelines that was permissible. Mm -hmm. And just... A follow-up question. Um, my understanding is that the actual event coordinators cancelled the event and it wasn't council that did that. Through you, Madam Mayor, Council, that's correct, Councillor Hogan. Um, councils had no dealings directly um, and nor would it have any ability to, to cancel the event. It's actually a Long Jetty Street Festival Incorporated event um, and the first we found out about it was via the Facebook posting as well. But okay. to date, we don't have any formal notification okay. from the group that, there, that the event is definitely cancelled. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you, councillors. I don't have any speakers listed against the motion, so I'll put the motion moved by Councillor Vincent, seconded by Councillor Matthews. All in favour, please raise your hand. Any opposed? Carried. Uh, we might just invite Councillor McLaughlin back in. 
Uh, councillors, the next item is um, item 5.3. Uh, the Workers' Compensation Self-Insurers Licence Renewal. Um, Councillor McGregor, I believe this was you, but again, we might just wait for Councillor McLaughlin. Um, okay. Um, yep, we can take your questions. Yes. Thank you. Madam Mayor. Um, as far as I'm aware, I might have missed it if there was. We haven't had a, a briefing or anything on this, so I just want to ask some questions about it to get a bit more information before either supporting or not supporting it. Um, what, what was the former arrangement? Because this is talking about self-insurer's licence. Uh, what was the former arrangement? What's the change? Three, Madam Mayor, Councillor McGregor. Each of the former councils were self-insured under the same scheme and held licences, identical. Um, uh, there's a number of local councils that do likewise, and it's quite a common thing in the sector to be self-insured. So a, it's a it's, continuation, basically. It's a continuation, and um, if you have a self-insurance licence, it releases you from the legal obligation to have a commercial insurer provide you with your workers' compensation insurance. So you manage it internally, according to some very strict guidelines that is set by um, the authority, Sarah. Okay. Um, how many LTIs have we had in the past 12 months and will this impact the policy? Um, I'd have to take that question on notice, Councillor McGregor. I couldn't give you the exact figure, but I think it is a consideration that CIRA takes into account when granting the licence. And they certainly monitor a number of um, parameters, including that, quite closely. And in turnaround times on claims, etc. it's very heavily regulated. Okay. Uh, and how many, if any, um, individuals do we have currently on workers' compensation? <laughs> I could, I'd have to take that question on notice. There are a significant number. I don't know whether Ms Sullivan would know. Um, but I can certainly provide that information. Okay. Um, I believe that answers all my questions. So with the further information on its way, I'm, I'm happy to support the recommendation. Uh, so you're moving that way, Councillor McGregor. Do I yes. have a seconder? Uh, Councillor Mertens. Um, Councillor McGregor, did you need to speak to this? Um, I wouldn't. Oh, sorry, I wouldn't speak further other than to say that I look forward to seeing what the information is on this because obviously, as we've seen, it does affect the um, the policy. But also just to make sure that we're we're reaching benchmarks or, or we're not performing badly in this area. It'd be it's, safety is a very important thing. It's not just red tape, as some people say. So um, I'd like to see us move forward proactively and progressively on this, and I support the recommendation. Thank you, Councillor McGregor. Councillor, are there any speakers against this recommendation? Um, I'll put the motion moved by Councillor McGregor, seconded by Councillor Mertens. All in favour? Any opposed? <coughs> Carried. Next item is item 7.1, notice of motion on Gwandalan Place Playground. And councillors, I'll be moving that this item be deferred um, to the next meeting. Are you seconding Councillor Vincent? Thank you. Uh, councillors, just to um, just to indicate why that is, um, the local residents have requested that it be deferred because they'd like to attend the meeting um, at Wang and they'd like to speak to this item. So it's just a deferral for that purpose. Um, any opposition? I'll put the motion moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Vincent. All in favour? Any opposed? Carried. Next item is item 7.2, notice of motions. Motion, Homeless Concern, Councillor Holstein. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, so motion you're is as, as per the board, and if I have a second, I'll speak to it. Uh, I think Councillor Mertens was next quickest there. Um, Councillor Holstein. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Councillors, uh, I understand and appreciate the issue of homelessness as a matter for the state government. And you'll see that what I'm here is not a cost imposter council, but purely to take the matter forward. That does relate to council on a number of factors. Homelessness uh, councillors uh, can be judged in many ways. It can be sleeping rough, it can be sleeping in vehicles, it can be couch surfing. One of the issues that's become more prevalent and involving this council has been the issue of those individuals sleeping rough. Many of the councillors may well have received uh, concerns from rate payers in regard to some of the minor tent cities that have uh, developed down and around the peninsula. They are the ones that are very visible. There are numbers that are up in our council reserves, you know, not far from this building, in fact, itself, where individuals are gathering and sleeping rough. Of course, uh, those ones that are in public domain, such as parks and uh, sports fields and playgrounds, 
cause concern to the residents, not that they're unsympathetic of these individuals and the plight that they have, but also the safety factor for their families. And there have been a number of incidents where there has been interaction with the public that has caused some concern. The residents, of course, in reporting that to council, council rangers will then go out and to their credit, at times the council rangers... I can't believe my time is up. Ask for an extension, Madam Mayor. You sure uh, somebody didn't start that at a minute? Uh, Councillor Holstein, I'll give you a, a bit of um, leniency. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Um, the issue for the residents are they are contacted council. The rangers come out. Now, the rangers are limited in what they can do. The rangers can issue a fine. That starts the next fire. It doesn't do anything. And if they are convinced these people to move on, they're just moving into another location. The government, non-government agencies and not-for-profits, such as Unitings, uh, Mary Max, Coast Shelter, um, uh, St Vincent de Paul, go out and try to address these issues. And they're not having much luck. There was an example from um, Martin Plaza that was very contentious uh, a, a while ago um, where homeless people gathered and what was used in that case was the assertive outreach program that is different to just the normal entities who support those who are homeless going out. It involved having a representative from one of a number, if not uh, one, several government departments such as housing, mental health, uh, such as drug and alcohol, who would go along with this assertive outreach program. Now, when I lodged this motion, which was to be an urgency motion, thank you for putting it on the books, um, several days ago, uh, I put it in late last week, it was interesting on Sunday, and I've given the councillors a copy of uh, an announcement from the government, which is uh, is great news, that four million, uh, $1 billion is to be spent on homeless services over the next four years. But if you refer to that article in the Sunday's paper, Minister Goward actually comments in the last comment that we are introducing assertive outreach work in more locations as this has already supported more than 220 rough sleepers from the inner city to permanent housing. They've got an 85% success rate with the assertive outreach. All I'm asking here, councillors, because we as councillors have to deal with our ratepayers who don't feel that our rangers are adequately addressing it, they're not able to adequately address it through the not-for-profits in their own right. And assertive outreach will mean that we get a better result for these individuals doing it tough. It will ease the angst that residents see in seeing these uh, Councillor little Holstein, do you need a up. minute? And I ask the councillors purely to support it. A, to ask the government that we Please are Councillor in need Matthews. of an assertive outreach team here on the Central Coast. B, that we ask for support from our local members of parliament, no matter what their political persuasion. And three, that we advise those not-for-profit agencies and request their support for the assertive outreach program. There are funds available. Let's put our hand up. We need to socially do this. We need for our ratepayers to do this and to tackle the issue in a more positive and productive way. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Holstein. Councillor Mertens, did you want to speak as seconder as a motion? Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Holstein, for um, bringing this to, to Council. Um, I think it's been a very interesting matter. I think it's one that's um, really uh, polarised the Peninsula community, especially. It's a community that I know that Councillor Holstein spends a lot of time in. It's a, it's a community that I work in and, and see this, uh, this homelessness issue every single day. Um, I think it's one something that is, is currently very visible to a lot of people. I think that there's been an interesting um, dichotomy of, of, of perspective from m many people in the community. Um, it's been, yes, a very, a very good and a very loud voice about um, people concerned for people's welfare um, and for making sure that these people, especially in the cold weather, um, have access to um, warmth and food, um, proper care. Um, but there's also been a very concerning um, attitude about um, ruining the public amenity um, you know, think about the Pelicans sort of situation at, at Woi Woi. It's literally a, a line that people have said to me. Um, and I think that we need to bring this back to a consideration about um, the welfare of these people. Um, <clears throat> yes, this is not a matter that um, the council can necessarily go out in there and, and provide blankets and, and warm soup every night. Um, but I do think that there has been um, a, a dereliction of duty again from... Um, from the state government in terms of funding commitments. Um, I know that our, our local NGOs are working very hard um, and have been doing outreach to these, to these individuals on a number of occasions. But when you have situations where people are dying 
on public reserves, on council reserves in Woi Woi, uh, at the back of a car park, um, because uh, there is not the services there to help them. Uh, the council rangers haven't um, provided the assistance or, or moved them on from the illegal camping spots. It creates a very different perspective. Um, to have people die on a public reserve um, should never be the situation that we've had, but we had that just two weeks ago. Um, more needs to be done, um, and I commend Councillor Holstein for this, uh, bringing this motion, but I would also ask that an addendum be added uh, at the bottom of that, of the current existing text, where that council make, the council makes urgent representation of state government, that all stays, um, but a further sentence at the bottom that says uh, the council continues, so not, not a D, not a D, but so another part two. Another par, yeah, part two. Um, that council continues um, to take part in actions that are within its jurisdiction in terms of um, illegal camping uh, and care for these individuals. Councillor Holstein, are you happy with that happy addition? That. Thank yes. you. Um, Councillor Gail Collins, I have you listed next. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I'd like to propose an amendment, if I may. <laughs> If you'd be willing to hear Councillor Holstein. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I'd like to add after Councillor Merton's final point here. Just waiting for the ladies. Thanks, ladies. So to keep it the same, but then to add in a final point, which would be uh, that council invite Minister for Family and Community Services. And social housing. Prue Goward. To the Central Coast. And advocate for an assertive outreach pilot program. to assist homelessness in the Central Coast region. And if I may, I'd like to speak to that. Um, let me just check. Councillor Holstein, are you happy to accept that as part of your motion? I uh, have no difficulty. The Honourable Prue Goward uh, coming up, I should welcome her. Uh, Councillor Mertens, you're happy as the seconder. Um, so that becomes part of the motion. So Councillor Gail Collins, if you'd like to speak to that as part of the motion. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, councillors and executive leaders. As someone that has worked with people with mental health issues and homelessness, I support this motion. My husband and I have attended the Coast Shelter CEO sleep out at the Reptile Park to raise awareness and funds for the issue of homelessness here on the Central Coast. Over the last four years, the state government funding for homelessness on the Central Coast District has doubled to 10.6 million. On Sunday, the Premier, Treasurer and Minister Goward announced that rough sleepers, young people and victims of domestic violence and those at risk of becoming homeless will receive tailored support to find stability and improve their lives <clears throat> under the New South Wales Homelessness Strategy. The 2018-2019 budget commits more than $1 billion to homelessness services over the next four years. $61 billion of the new funding is to, imp is to implement the homelessness strategy across the state over the next four years. The new funding for 2018-2019 includes $3.8 million for assertive outreach to proactively support rough sleepers. I think there is merit in supporting the outreach pilot program on the Central Coast. And let's invite, and I look forward to us inviting Minister for Family and Community Services and Social Housing, Minister uh, Prue Goward, to the Central Coast as we advocate for the outreach pilot program in the Central Coast region. Thank you. Thank you, you Councillor Gail Collins. Um, Councillor Best, if we could just have one meeting at a time, that would be great. Councillor McGregor, did you want to speak to this item? I rise to speak in support of the motion. I think it's excellent that we're seeing some leadership on this issue, that we're tackling the inequality agenda. Um, homelessness is a serious concern. It's not one of these niche little off to the side things that we don't worry about. It's an issue that can affect and does affect many families, both locally and across the state and the nation. Um, particularly concerning if you're looking into the sector and you're hearing from the industry leaders and the people that are on the ground in the service sector, they're saying that it's an issue that with elderly women is becoming even more and more prevalent with over a 60% rise in women over the age of 60 becoming homeless. But also it's an issue that's increasing for youth as well. So people, um, 
teenagers and, and in their early 20s, it's also increasing for those groups. So we're talking about providing genuine and real assistance for our community's most vulnerable. So I commend the motion. I think it's really important that we do look at some of these social issues. And even though we might not necessarily be the go-to body for it, we can facilitate. We can also bring other people together and we can provide leadership. And I see this motion doing so. I think it'll have a great tangible um, effect on the coast. It'll be great to see us doing what we can to provide a service for some of our most vulnerable people and most in need. And I commend the motion to the Chamber. Thank you, Councillor McGregor. Councillor Best. Yeah. Um, mm, look, I'm, I'm not going to rise to speak against something like this, but I would, uh, and I'll commend Chris uh, and Richard for raising it. It's certainly something that's very um, near to my heart that you see firsthand what's going on in our community and it's just plain wrong. Um, but how we go after this is, I think, the, the question in the room. It's not that we go after it, it's how do we go after it? And a motion like this is to be commended, but I think you know we really should take a long, deep breath about how we go after it. And this motion, and I'm sure it doesn't intend, but in the verbiage at the bottom, it, it talks about the Woi Woi area. And I only drove by a homeless gentleman in the Kalani Vale Shopping Centre on Sunday. I mentioned to one of the staff members this morning that I'd seen this gentleman. And he said, yes, I saw him as well. I drove past as well. This gentleman's sleeping in the doorway of a shop in Kalani Vale. I haven't seen that before in Kalani Vale. Not in the street itself proper. The number of people sleeping in cars in, in my area of Noraville at the beach, particularly women, as Kyle says, a lot of women are finding themselves in a difficult situation and often a child in the back seat. So, and next time I bring something in here and ask to advocate, please don't knock me over because this is exactly what we can't control but we should advocate for. And that's certainly in the DNA of the room tonight. But Chris, I, I, I just think that we'll do this by all means, but let's not let this be a dead cat bounce and have a motion and, and get a report. We've got to follow this next step on because this is now moving epidemic proportions. I know you see people in Sydney. I see them all the time when I'm down there. But you know, I don't want to, you know, I would say okay in Sydney, but gee, it cuts through when you see all those cars in the car park and not, and they're not tourists just going through, you know, like, you know, let's get the tourists camping illegally. These are people and we've booked a few of them too, I found out recently, and <clears throat> we kind of had to renegotiate some of that. I didn't mean to do that, but here we're booking people sleeping in cars. So I think we can do it differently as well. You could go the Byron route, where they've just thrown every single person that can possibly consider to sleep in their car out of town, put huge signs up and, and thrown all the backpackers out, and uh, I think they most probably threw all the homeless people out at the same time. So that's how they've managed it in Byron um, with the, uh, the caring, you know, new age group that Byron wants to rec represent. I think we can do it a bit more compassion, but we've got to do it with the community's balance at heart as well because people don't want to see this in their street. It's that balancing act. And I'm not going to stand here and have all the answers. I just don't have them. But this is getting worse. It's growing by the day. And people are coming here because they think it's more affordable and cheaper rental. They fall out of their rental. They end up in their car. It is a very timely motion, Chris. I thank you for raising it. Thank you, Councillor Best. Um, Councillor Marquette. Thank you, Madam Mayor. J just um, through you, Madam Mayor, just a question for staff. Could you just explain um, exactly what does happen when one of our rangers comes across uh, one of these poor people, exactly what the process is and how we deal with it? Um, Mr Prendergast. Through you, Madam Mayor, I can speak to the fact that we have the ability to issue on-the-spot fines and we can go to prosecution. The actual process with the rangers um, when dealing with the person on site, I have to take as a question on notice. Okay, that, that'd be great if you could. I'm, I'm just interested because, yeah, obviously prosecution in regards to someone homeless is, gonna, is fruitless. So what we do, you know, I suppose the question is also just a second part to it, but where, where do we push when there's an issue where we can't just issue a fine? What organisation do we push it towards? How do we try and remedy the problem? 
Thank okay. you. Through you, Madam Mayor, I'll take that as a question on notice as well. Thank you. Okay. Madam Mayor, um, I can probably add to that if, it's fine. if you're happy with that. Um, Councillor Marquette, um, our representatives of my department sit on our homelessness implementation group. So there are a number of homeless agencies that are working in partnership and coordination to address the issue, which is obviously fairly significant that you've heard this evening. So there are, uh, the issue is that often those um, agencies are um, limited in what they can also do because they're at, at maximum capacity. But um, we've developed an emergency response um, card that's a fairly um, mobile and usable um, piece of information. It provides information about um, food and emergency um, facilities that um, any person that's homeless or finds themselves under financial hardship can actually access appropriate um, support services across the region. So is that something like that the, the rangers would be able to give information to those people about that card or they literally would be able to give them the card? Through you, Madam Mayor, correct. Um, they often will carry the cards with them okay. and they'll actually hand that information out. So the rangers work very closely um, with the community partnerships team within council to ensure that obviously they have a regulation um, component of their role, but they also have a human component as well. So um, we certainly try to take into account all of those elements and look at it holistically as an organisation. And just one more question through you, Madam Mayor, and it's with that information, do you believe, Julie, that that existing template would work well with what's suggested in, in the motion here? Um, through you, Madam Mayor, I mean, it's certainly um, a significant issue. I think all the speakers that have spoken on it, um, I could only echo the same sort of concerns. It's a, it's a growing issue. Um, Council's concurrently developing an affordable and alternate housing strategy, um, but the issue of homelessness and um, the increases of that is certainly prevalent in our region. Um, so I think it's more than appropriate what's being proposed this evening. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Vaughan. Thank, Thank you, Councillor Marquette. Um, Councillor Hogan, did you want to speak on this? Um, yes, thanks, Madam Mayor. Actually, I'd like to make an amendment. Um, <coughs> I'll oh, just on uh, point A and add cars in there. Uh, so is it in council parks, reserves and in cars? Yes, is that correct? Let me just check. Councillor Holstein, Councillor Mertens, you're okay with that? Councillor Hogan. Yeah, um, look, I, I just want to say one of the reasons I put my hand up to be a councillor is because I actually do work within the community and I think I'm one of the few on this council that actually Councillor works. Councillor Hogan, could I just ask you to stand to address Yeah, council? just Sorry. actually, well, everyone else gets this say and I just want to say at the end of the night. So, oh, did she ask me to stand up? <laughs> I asked that. <laughs> what did you think I was doing then, Councillor Hogan? I, I asked Doug, because I'm not very good at these technicalities, and I asked Doug, he said, no, you're right, just sit down. <laughs> Look, nobody notices when I'm... Provide better guidance, Councillor. No one notices when I'm standing All right, up All anyway. right, Councillor Hogan, so continue. Hilarious. I just wanted to say, you know, rounding up the night, that one of the reasons I put my hand up was because I... I'm one of the few here that actually do work in the community and work with all the issues that you're talking about here today. In the last 10 years, we've seen um, a spike in everything from homelessness to drug and alcohol to young people living on the streets, domestic violence is out of control. Uh, you talk about Prue Goward and you talk about family and community services, there isn't any increase in funding for <coughs> generic services. Prue Goward's been to the coast. Facts will tell you there's no extra money. They're going through reform. In 30 years, community centres have had one increase of $10,000. That's it. So whilst we're all funded to do basket weaving, now we're actually working with these really, really difficult cases. Chris is absolutely right, and I thank him for bringing this to the chamber. It is our women are women in domestic violence, they're living in cars. Whether they're registered or not, that's not for us to ask. So there's a high car ownership. The other thing that we're losing is our tradies. They're in between jobs because of the casualisation of work. So every day we've got a tradie in, in a truck saying, can I have a shower, can I have some clothes, can I wash the clothes? This is real stuff. This isn't stuff where You've spoken to someone and spoken to the third person and said, oh, that's terrible. This is stuff that I see and my staff and the 50 volunteers see 
every single day of their life and they are impacted by it. And it's not just in Woi Woi, it's right up our coast. In our area, we have a beautiful lady who just won a workmanship award through the Rotary Club and her name's Evelyn. She's 82 years of age and she actually goes under the bridge to get all the homeless and to give them blankets and food. That's what she does as a community, a community member. It's beautiful. We really do need to address it, but it needs to be addressed at different levels. I want to actually commend the staff because they've been doing affordable housing strategy where 200 people came to that. And it's really interesting. We've got another one in another couple of weeks. So there's lots of angles we can come at. Um, but please, when, when you're talking about people, these are real people. They're not people who you've read about or spoken to Joe Blow down the street. If you want to really meet these people and understand it, please visit your local centres. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hogan. Councillors, I don't have any speakers again, so I'll put the motion moved by Councillor Holstein. Second. Um, you don't need to, but Councillor Holstein, because of the nature of the matter, I'll allow you to. Yes. Thank you, Madam Mayor. As a mover of the motion, I think it's appropriate that I acknowledge some of the comments and the changes to the motion that has come. And I thank the councillors for those changes to the motion. Every one of us tried to improve the outcome, and I thank them for that. But there's been a couple of things uh, that have said here this evening. There was no indication that it was just woi woi. It was broader field. I spoke about what I have experienced as a ward councillor from Woi Woi and Gosford, but nothing in the motion. It is the Central Coast, it is wide, because Councillor um, Best and Hogan are very correct. The sleeping rough is growing and it is becoming a monstrous problem. Can I also defend our range of services only in saying that I know that they work with a lot of the not-for-profits in trying to socially be compassionate and responsive to these individuals, but they are limited within their powers to issue a fine or ask them to move on. The range of service has been exceptional and um, uh, Director Vaughan is correct. There is liaison there, but there are limitations not only for the rangers, there are limitations for the not-for-profits. And I'm not going to get into the political arguments of how much more we could or would need to spend, but there is a indication here and I think it would be remiss of us as a council if we didn't move to that. Um, opportunity that's been highlighted by the government. There is no report here, and it's not letting the dead cat, cat bounce, Councillor Best. It is proactive in what we're doing, and to get the support of our uh, of the government, get the support of the parliamentarians, and also to all of those agencies. Not only the agencies that I've dealt with, with uniting St Vincent de Paul, uh, the Salvos, Coast Shelter, Mary Max. It's everyone across the coast because we have to show our compassion. It was said here earlier by one of the councillors. And what impression are we giving the public? This is not about giving an impression. It's not grandstanding and it's not politically banging someone over the head. It is an issue out there. And it was correctly pointed out by uh, Councillor Mertens that there have been deaths that we're aware of down on the peninsula within this tent city. If four people died in an accident be it on Brisbane Water Drive or Enterprise Drive, there'd be a public outcry that there needed to be something to done. But if you're homeless, if you have issues and you die in a tent in a reserve, you can't be forgotten, nor can your issues, and it is responsive of us as a councillor to ensure, councillors, to ensure that the government assist us in giving direction. The assertive outreach has worked. As I said before, it has an 85% success rate. I hope the government, and when the minister comes up, will support us in that position to move forward and address this plight within our community. Thank you, Councillor Holstein. I'll put the motion moved by Councillor Holstein, seconded by Councillor Mertens. All in favour? Any opposed? Unanimous. Thank you, Councillors. Councillors, we're on to um, questions on notice, so I'll just go round the room. Um, I might start with Councillor Best tonight. Councillor Best. No, thank you. Uh, no, that was a good decision of mine. Councillor Hogan. <coughs> Pardon me. I understand the importance of community having their say. However, 
Do we have a policy on the number of speakers? Okay. Is it um, possible to have one speaker for the motion and one against at the meetings? Um, who would like to respond to that? I'd love to. Ms Sullivan. Ms Sullivan. Through you, Madam Mayor, the policy on the number of speakers at council meetings is in the Code of Meeting Practice, and we have a future report coming to the next council meeting with some proposed changes, so that will be an opportunity to look at the number of speakers for items. Um, I can advise that when there are a lot of speakers, we do go back to the speakers and ask if they consider reducing the number of speakers or identifying a spokesperson. Um, thank you, Councillor Hogan. Did you have a second you. question? Yeah, I've got a second one. Um, and this keeps raising its head all the time. What is the process for de-amalgamation of Central Coast Council and our costings for the process available to councillors or community members? Uh, through you, Madam Mayor, um, I can answer that question generally, and you can tell me if you want a more detailed answer. There is no easy statutory process for de-amalgamation like there is for amalgamation. The Act treats those two processes differently, but you can pass a resolution which requests the Minister to consider de-amalgamating. You need to be quite specific, it needs to be precise, and then you initiate the statutory process. Um, if that is something that the councillors wished to deal with, I would suggest that would need to be the subject of a specific notice of motion so that I can give the advice that you need as to how you would seek that. Thank, so. thank you. Thank you, you Councillor Hogan. Councillor Vincent, question? Councillor Burke? No, Councillor Greenaway. Uh, sometimes when there's motions, um, I have trouble, trouble trying to visualise them. So my question is, um, given the advanced capabilities of graphic design programs, could staff please investigate using such programs to create simulated images of items such as the HMAS Adelaide mast and the relocation of the War Memorial from Erina to Terrigal in a similar way that artists' impressions give a better idea of what things are going to look like in situ and um, advise as to whether this can be incorporated in future business papers. Um, I'll take that on notice if I can, Councillor Greenway. It's actually reasonably complicated depending on the context, so I'll take it on notice. Any other questions, Councillor Greenway? No? Uh, Councillor McLaughlin? Just on the matter of the, the dredge uh, application, was there any um, notification of the surf break of the box in, or any consideration of the surf break of the box in the dredging application? Um, through you, Madam Mayor, uh, Councillor McLaughlin, there was reference not to the surf break at the box, but there was reference to how the spoil from the dredging process might be dealt with in a very general sense, but it wasn't that specific. Okay, thank you. Nothing else? Uh, Councillor Pillan. Oh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, has the Aero Club applied to the Council um, for a formal extension of their licence to operate at all at official? Through you, Madam Mayor. Not that I'm aware of, Councillor Pillen. Okay, thank you. Um, Councillor McGregor. Two questions, as always. First question, what is the current status of the sister city relationship with the city of Nitra in Slovakia, former sister city of Gosford City? And what plans, if any, does Central Coast Council have in maintaining, extending or renewing that relationship? Um, through you, um, Madam Mayor, Councillor McGregor, I think that will be answered in the report that you've resolved to request from me, um, but I'd have to take the question on notice if you want to dealt with um, as a question on notice in addition to a resolution. Happy to take it either way. Thanks. Um, second question. Can Council advise the time frame for delivery for the consolidated LEP and in particular, when this document will be ready for community consultation. Um, Mr Prendergast. Uh, through you, Madam Mayor. Uh, at the moment, we are doing the mapping with the Department of Planning and Environment. They're responsible for that component of it. Um, and we're expecting to have it out on community consultation towards the end of this month. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Matthews? No. Councillor Gail Collins? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, <clears throat> Are there any plans with regards to upgrading the fence at Rotary Park in Terrigal? Uh, Mr. I'd Benjamin? have to take that on notice, sorry. I couldn't tell you off the top oh, of my good. head. And the second question, if I may, is please advise of uh, housing estates that will benefit from the low-cost loan initiative. 
I'd have to take that on notice, but it's uh, something I can probably answer more quickly. Thank you. Possibly to the next meeting. Thank you. Councillor Sundstrom. No, Councillor Mertens. Councillor Holstein. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I have one question, but it's got two parts. First part, can st uh, staff please advise of the progress of the short, medium and long-term parking strategy? Three months in and many residents, business people and councillors are becoming frustrated with the delay. Thank you. Part two, are the staff aware that some of the parking has been cordoned off or reserved under the Brian McGowan Bridge? Advise this is for the workers working on the Donaldson Street Rail Bridge. Can this be investigated? Yes, it can be investigated, Councillor Holstein. Thank you. Um, Councillor Marquette. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, my question on notice is actually about questions on notice. I think Councillor Greenaway touched on it last week. I was just wondering if we might be able to obtain, if the question hasn't been answered in, say, six weeks, could we obtain even just a quick update or a notification that it is still being considered? Because I've never received an answer on any question that I've... Um, it's not thinking you don't love me anymore. Through you, Madam Mayor. Councillor Marquette, yes. We can? Yes. Have an update? Yes. We'll provide you with a report on that. That'd be wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, nothing else, Councillor Marco? No, thank you. Uh, thank, you. thank you, Councillors. The meeting is closed. Councillors, I would just remind you, um, if you wouldn't mind just waiting a few minutes after the meeting. It's very busy, Madam Mayor. Sorry? It's very busy. <laughs> a lot of things to get to. <laughs> <laughs> you have a busy night.